What a wonderful Wednesday. Is that... What, what's what's you doing there? Who are you channeling? Nobody. That was Howard Did Dean. That? Yeah, Howard Dean. Okay. We're going to stream say. on the YouTube, and then we're going to go to Twitch, and then we'll make an Instagram, and then we're going to go to TikTok, and then we're going to win back the subscribers. Yeah! <laughs> I mean, that's somewhat accurate. That sound, I suppose. Yeah. I'm excited about it. Everyone else should be too. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna start with the uh, the Elden Ring stream ones. Oh boy. We get through that. I guess we, that makes sense. What we can do as well, and as well as maybe the ones that come in today. Uh hmm. Alrighty. So the first one says Here we Yo, go. Mark is back on. Woo! The Marcus. Mark is back on. Um yeah, he was a he was a fun lad to, to have on to chat about video gaming in the video gaming industry as it stands. Um, mm -hmm. so he, he knows his video gamings, so we'll probably have him uh, maybe in future when we talk about video gamings. Well, when know. we do our Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, so next week. Yep, yeah, that's coming up. I probably am grabbing that game. That game looks fun. Um, it's for children for any system. Oh. It's Ooh. for everybody. Kirby is, a, is a, an adventure that's got drama, it's got action, it's got intrigue. Kirby, Kirby's a, he's, it's a real man's game. I actually do, and I mean, it's got Meta Knight, and he's pretty, he's pretty cool. Meta Knight is way cooler than Shadow the Hedgehog, I'm just saying. <laughs> like, Meta oh, Knight's way well. cooler. The, we go the, the, the opinions of Fringy are not necessarily uh, yeah. endorsed by uh, everyone. Okay, I mean, if you're happy podcast. to take a stand on the take that Shadow is better than... Uh, I'm, Meta I'm Meta not taking a stand, that's very, yeah, very we're doing clear. Your, I was your not goose taking drafts. a stand. We didn't, we didn't oh, and this is not a not being political and is political as podcasts. I have no opinion on the Meta Knight uh, Shadow the Hedgehog uh, controversy. Yeah, fair enough. Lord Longbong of Mutlington Abbey, have you given any more thought to a Kong fap of Peter Jackson's Long Kong? And um, when there's <laughs> less going on, it'd be a movie fap for the ages. P.S. Hello, Wagsies. Scritch is for the good boy. Hello. Uh, it is. It is in our plan. I would definitely like to see. Are we going to include? So, which will be part of those? It will be Peter Jackson's Kong. Will Skull Does Island be on there? The original? What about the original? Well, well oh yeah, we gotta yeah. watch the original. That I, shit was I haven't before. seen the original before. That's um. Well, I I don't know if you know Rags, but they've announced uh they're filming the sequel to Godzilla vs Kong this year. They're moving. They're trucking ahead. We got we got oh. loads to catch up on. Whole arc. In fact, I was thinking. Wow. I think I mentioned this before, but we may as well do uh Godzilla uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters again. With like a new, because we only had me, you, and Metal last time, so we have like a full cast of crazies to watch the whole set, maybe plus, uh, you know, that could be an arc right there. The lizard. Well, the whole arc. I think, so. I think it would the, fit. Uh, it would the arc fit. Would be Godzilla, then Kong, then well, Kong Skull Island, and then Godzilla, it, King of the Monsters, then Godzilla vs Kong. But also add the original Kong, the original Godzilla, and, and the, the ninety-eight Kong. Godzilla, and the Long Kong, and and the Long Kong. So that'd be an eight movie arc, Bowie. <laughs> That's well, you know, we've we've got we got a twelve movie well, in the works, I think. Yeah. So that means that the eventual um, what is it, Joel Shoe Schumacher, or is it no, Roland, Roland Emmerich? Roland, Roland Emmerich. Emmerich yeah. yeah, I can't believe I got those confused. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're gonna. Has Schumacher made anything like in the last ten years? But he died. What does he? Oh, sorry, I'm thinking of. I, I'm mixing him up with Jerry Bruckheimer for some reason. Uh, <laughs> I don't Heimer, know why. Heimer, all right. Has Jerry Bruckheimer made anything? Well, what about like the... Like... um? Are, are you sure you don't mean the really the little short guy from Arcane? Oh, that was Heimer Dinger. Oh, okay. No, I, no, okay. no, no, no. Right. Uh, not to be confused with Jerry Bruckheimer. The oh, I, oh, that's right. Jerry Bruckheimer is a producer. He didn't direct anything. Wait, did he not direct it? No, he's just a producer. My wires are crossed today. Mm -hmm. Oh. But that means that potentially, if we do a Roland Emmerich arc trajectory downwards, uh, a spiral of chaos, if we will, that Roland means Emmerich that we'll get Godzilla twice. Arc. So that means the only videos that we will potentially ever double up on for EFAP will be Godzilla related. There'll be Godzilla movies. Because there will be a reason for us to see the Matthew Broderick 98 Godzilla twice, and also a reason for us to see King of the Monsters twice. And I think so by a staggering coincidence, Godzilla movies doubling up for EFAP. 
And that'll be good because I think a lot of people are a big fan of the 98 Godzilla. They'd like to see it twice sort of thing. I would like to see it twice. I have seen it way, twice. They consider it like one of the greatest adaptations of like a, a Japanese to a... Uh, uh, yeah, but it type. really captures the spirit of yeah. the original creation, you know? And it like revamped the look of Godzilla. Like everyone thought he looked lame before, but then they've sort of updated him in the 98 one. They're like, wow. Her. Yeah, I mean, there's True, nothing yeah. cool about this massive. True. You lizard. don't misgender. This is 2022. Do not misgender Godzilla. She is a goddess. Um, and she lays all of her eggs inside of Madison um, Square Garden, right? Madison Square Garden. Where? How does she even do that? I don't know. That pussy be popping, I guess, as they say, the the hip lingo, if you will. What in Lizard Land? In Lizard Land. That, is that where Godzilla comes from, Lizard Land? Just absolutely. Lizard Land. Well, land yeah, the, the island, because the... Because the, remember, the intro Lizardia. of that movie is the establishing the nuclear tests at, like, Bikini Atoll and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Wait, was that's that Lizard the land. opening for Godzilla, that one, or Godzilla, the, I the new I think one, right? so. I'm so not sure. Do they all start that way? <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. The new one said that the nuclear tests were them trying to kill Godzilla, but it just didn't work. That's right. Uh, or yeah. that some of the nuclear tests were trying to kill him and it didn't work because Godzilla eats nukes for breakfast. He sits you down. Do. I like I like the idea of Godzilla just walking with a cup of coffee, scratching his back, all, you know, bags under his eyes, and he's got like a nuke on a plate, and he just <laughs> chops it with a knife and fork. He's just Pop, munching pops it in on the it. microwave just to make sure it's extra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, and then he yawns. This is a gag. I want to write this down because I think I want to make that. In <laughs> yeah, nasty. instead of having split peas, he has split atoms. <laughs> yes. It's perfect. Perfect now, gag. Got with... the day in the life of Godzilla. What is the um I'm writing that down. <laughs> for I, I think it was I don't know, maybe my brain's just doing a tism. Have they ever used I think they did. I think they used a really bad version of Godzilla <laughs> by Blue Oyster Cult as a in uh, as an outro song, a credit song for a Godzilla movie. Was that King of the Monsters? I can't remember. I be. All I remember about because that song Monsters. is great, and the cover that they used for it is shit. And I think that was in King of the Monsters, but I can't be certain. Charles what Dance is it with King covers? King. Like, we people, in, they love covers. Like the Halo show had like a cover for a uh, it, it, like a cover, not a great one. Instead of just using the Halo, that's out today, by the way. Oh, is it? Whoa. Oh, when are we uh, watching that? Halo. When is our hmm. date with Destiny? Uh, I guess we could probably watch it like tomorrow. I guess <laughs> I will be gone tomorrow. I will nah, be back right, well, late tomorrow, but that'll well, be I mean, late for that me. Might line so. up. It's it's uh. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah, figure maybe it out. we'll figure yeah. it out. We will figure it out. I'm I there there is no requirement, by the way, to commit to like watching. It's a nine episode season. We don't have to do that. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't have much. I'll of, I, I'm watch just, the yeah. whole season. Um, I probably will, but you don't have to. <laughs> we will see. I'm curious. The the scores have me legitimately curious what it could be about with scores well, like it has. I mean, the sentiment that you get from those reviews as well as, I guess, just what you could have pulled from the trailers as well as, you've heard the quote, right? We didn't talk about the games. We didn't play the games. Yeah, we didn't talk about them. We didn't play them. Yeah, yeah always great to hear. Uh, that's that's great. one of those Battlefield 5 don't buy it quotes. It's like, or it's yeah. kind of just... It's really damning, unfortunately. <laughs> and, yeah, you know who loves Halo? Gamers? Halo uh, fuck the games. Well, it's just, who are you, like... Who's this for, maybe. then? Well, yeah, because Halo is, um... I would say that at this point, Halo has probably had, like, maximum reach of any audience that it would have, you know? Like, there's not really anybody who would be interested Who's in discovering Halo. discovering Halo? Has not, yeah, exactly. Everybody's heard of it. Every, most people, like, a lot of people... I was about to say most people, actually probably less than half of the planet has played it, but a lot of people have played it. Um, it's probably got maximum reach. Oh, I didn't mean that. <laughs> 3.5 billion reach. people um, have, have yeah, probably maybe. not played well, Halo, yeah. And and I, I guess it's at this point, if you're making it and you're going to make it for like a new audience, I don't know that that audience exists. Um, but then again, I, I, don't, I don't even know. I don't really know like the 343 kind of, even understands what made Halo really cool. Um, I feel like there's always, I feel like in that show, there is a tone that 
was present in like the 343 Halo games that doesn't align with what Halo is like really straightforward. It feels different, yeah. As its own thing. It's a pretty straightforward premise. Um and it's got Halo a certain... One is like a new hope. Kind it's of very yeah. simple. It's really simple and straightforward. It's it had a lot more underneath the surface, but only if you went looking for it. And I mean, yeah, at its core, if you were to describe it with any sort of keywords, there would be like awe, mystery, heroism, like you know, you, you these sorts of tones that I feel like have been utterly absent. In like the three, four, three. There's a certain. I would also say that I don't even know that I describe Halo as ever having like a sleek look. It's it's very like military, like gritty kind of militaristic yeah it's like the covenant had like a very soft it put, edges. yeah it made them distinct from human stuff well and the flood. they were designed with gameplay in mind you know in terms of conveying things to people but i i don't know i i don't i don't know i i just don't get the impression that they've ever really had a good understanding of what like made halo really cool um, it's almost like they were just some studio that got told to make halo games one day to, well, whose express purpose and sole purpose is to make Halo a multimedia franchise. That's that's their goal. That's what they do. Whereas Halo is just a really cool idea for a video game from a team that just stumbled across it, really. They wanted to make a science fiction strategy game, and then it just morphed into a first-person shooter. And then they got bought by Microsoft and made it for Xbox. That was how I that think... game came about. I think that New Hope comparison, when when you think about what New Hope was and then what Empire and was what after yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Halo That's, to Halo 2 gives me right. like identical vibes. You're right. Oh, like this Star is really Wars amazing. Was... How do we keep this going? All right, well, let's expand this and let's add this aspect to these characters and let's flesh them out a bit yeah. and let's make the story a bit deeper and, you know, that sort of thing. And it worked out really, really well just because it was it was executed well. I think that is a really apt comparison because yeah, two blew the doors open on that world. Um, oh yeah, we're going to different places. The you you play as an elite, an elite, yeah. I, like it's this elite guy, and they have like this like, like a a place. You go to their cities, and like wow, like interesting. We're at brutes and all that sort of thing. It was it was a huge expansion. That leap from Halo to Halo Two is a big one. Mm hmm. What happened? You know. <laughs> What happened? Yeah, we'll see about that show. Mm, we will. Yeah. We will. Today is Saturday, March 19th, 2022. Well, we're only four days out. Bad. That's actually pretty good. That is pretty good. <laughs> that said, is pretty good. Uh, it says, it's the toothbrush weeb. Hi, Rags. It's Hello. A Theo. Toothbrush scene. Uh, oh man, the first defab I have to skip over spoilers. Love y'all, have a coffee. Oh. Oh, thank you. Very nice. I know Fringy likes coffee. He does. I do like coffee, yeah. Uh, also spoilers, Theo... I used Theo... to hate coffee. What was that? I used to hate coffee, I remember. I used to not understand, but now I do. I used <laughs> to hate coffee. Yeah. I still do, but I used to, too. Yeah. Also, spoilers, Theo will be the downer here, but I do agree with him. I wish Souls Light Games stayed niche. I think his perspective is a little more complicated than that. <laughs> but, I think so too. He had a he had a, he had a, a, a lot of things to say in a lot of different directions, but um, it was interesting. I'm glad he. I'm certainly glad he was there. He's very knowledgeable. Certainly, he has a lot of. He certainly cares. Oh yeah. Ronnie and Frenzy endings are the best endings. Well, that was uh, me and Mel's endings, respectively. Neat. Uh, yay for Theo. He's my favorite recurring character. You know, it's, it's, they're always interesting episodes whenever Theo, you know, mm -hmm. strumbles in. Uh, hi, Rags. Hello! Hi, everyone else. Hello. Are there more doors or wheels hey. in the world? Oh no. We already did that. No, we, we, we did discuss that. It was, we, it was wheels. We concluded yeah, wheels. Yeah, I think we agreed on wheels. Yeah. Though there was, it there was, was a good a, discussion. Yeah, it was a we had a lot wheels. of backs and forths, a lot of discussion on what is a wheel, what is a door, what do we count, what is the spirit of the question, you know, 
that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm very satisfied with our our discussion of it. Yeah. Uh, Theo, have EFAP watch Bake Monogatari? He is. I imagine since he has never asked that we watch that, that he doesn't care to recommend us it. I assume. A hot take. Easiest Soulsborne game, but enjoyable. Um, I don't I know the easiest. I feel like easiest. I've been doing a lot easier with Dark Souls 3 than I did with uh, this game, personally. Of what uh, little I've played. How much have you looked around? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm six hours in and fighting Margaret. Do you have any ashes? Uh, I think I've got ashes. I I don't know. I've got the thing that allows me to do ashes. I've gone and collected some things. I went to this underground labyrinth that had these slow, craggly-looking fellas in a purple sky. Well, as which one is the easiest? That's that's tough for me to answer because a lot of them, it'll change very much on whether or not you have certain things, but some things are like, well, of course they'll have that and use that. And it's like, eh, maybe. Sometimes people just don't. Isn't Fringy still using a plus one weapon? What weapon you got? I am. Oh. I just got a, the sword. I got the sword. Um, But I got I got items that I can craft better. I just I don't have number two. I got number four, like crafting thing or whatever it's called. You see, I, I don't understand the game so very great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting there though. Okay. Yeah. Mel, you're in chat. Which do you think is the easiest game in the lot? As no, I Metal at this point has what the most hours in it out of everybody. <laughs> I think Metal has more experience uh, than I do. I would probably say the easiest. Like, uh, the thing is that Elden Ring has like one of the hardest bosses in the entire set of games. So what does that count for? If I think like the majority of the experience is relatively easy. But that is like, hmm. you know, what does that mean overall? I don't know. Yeah. Interesting thought. With summons, it's Elden Ring. Well, so the Ash is kind of... I mean, you guys heard us talking about it. There are some bosses where you don't have to do anything at all. You can just summon it. And it's a yeah. very much like a, a mechanic they introduce directly to you. You have your own, like, that page upgrades for it. It's, it's you know, it's just like in an FPS. Like, here are your grenades. These grenades will insta-kill bosses. It's like, oh. Hmm. Sounds pretty good. Mm -hmm. Going by the first playthrough, probably Elden Ring, but I used Ashes, so not super sure. That's kind of yeah, my position. Right. It's like, are we counting Ashes? And I'm pretty sure we should. I don't see why we wouldn't. Basically, Dark Souls Elden Ring is to Ashes what the Bible is to slavery. I don't yes. get it. That's right, that's fine. Might be a mix between DS3 and ER. That's probably my take as well, I think. Um, my super serious, bad ass, and totally not stupid animal for you today is the Arabian Sand Boa. Arabian Sand Boa. Arabian Sand Boa. That is, uh... <laughs> I mean... Uh, let me... <laughs> let me, uh, let me paste this for you. Snakes can be more intimidating, let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> they are extremely successful predators because their prey are too busy laughing to run. Hey, look, maybe that is a strategy out there in the wild. Do, you know, it's a crazy world out there. Do you guys know what a planarian is? I can't say that oh. I'm familiar. All right. Uh, let, me, let me just post you a picture of a planarian, and then you'll understand why I brought it up. <laughs> yeah, I can see why you bring that up. <laughs> I think I have heard of those. I just d didn't ring a bell at the time. But, uh, <laughs> yes, I agree with the idea that it looks like a child's attempt to draw a snake, this boa. Yes. Pretty uh, unfortunate, but hey. It's like, oh, Timmy, you forgot to draw the eyes. And then they just go, they reach over and they just draw them on. <laughs> draw them on their head, yeah. yeah. And then there it goes right on the fridge. <laughs> That's perfect. With all actually. the other fucked up shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look! You should you should discourage artistic endeavors, right? Yeah. I'm not. I'm not at all. Kids are just shitty artists. Oh, well, I'm sure that there are some who are really great. 
I wish FromSoft could have eight years to work on a single game. Um, uh, that's pretty unviable economically, but you know, I guess maybe. if the if the if the true sentiment is just, I wish all games were given Ew. the time they need to be fully refined. It's like, yeah, then yes, yeah, because um, I wonder what at what point do you start really seeing diminishing returns with time? Um, I would say that it depends on the scope of the game, really. But I mean, at some point, you got to stop, and yeah. It's, uh, it's like, yeah, like what, like the difference between one year of development and two years is huge. You know, what's the difference, the difference between, between seven, seven and eight? And eight yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's all about you triage right at the end. Like when it comes to game development, triage is like, here's all what's, the bugs. We got to fix them. Yeah. Yeah. What's the most important bugs we need to fix to get this game out the door? Um, but I don't, I don't know how the triage process works now with like the fact that you can patch games after release. I, I don't know. I have no idea. It's interesting to see games as they go and how they change. Um, no, it's not. Games yeah. as a service is exactly that. Studios working on a game for about 10 years. Right, no. so like Destiny didn't That's get 10 different. years of development time. It came out yeah. after like four years or five years yeah, of Yeah, it got 17 time. minutes of development time. And wow. then they're like, oh shit. Yeah, I, I don't know that any... I'm pretty sure that even Red Dead Redemption 2 didn't like enter into full production until after Grand Theft Auto V. I don't know that it was worked on like straight from like Red Dead Redemption 1. Yeah, I, I, I bet it's one of those things well. where they have artists and concept makers and things like that. After they're done with the work for one game, they're like, all right, this is going to be our next project. Go ahead and start you know put well, yeah, stuff a together of, you know a lot of developers of now have like smaller so they'll have like two teams so there'll be like the main team that is working on the current project and then you got like a smaller team that is then on pre-production for the new project and then when they're done with the other one then the team moves over to that seems to be a common way that they do it now i was about to say i'm pretty sure metal gear solid 5 had like seven years of development but that game wasn't done like that game was clearly not finished um, I can't I even remember what... the end of that game. I think I got to I, a point. I don't, I, I don't think I beat or... it. I think I stopped once I got. I got to the second chapter and it was like repeat missions and stuff, like with modifiers. And I think at that, and I think I had about fifty hours. I got a lot of time in that game. But I had a decent like... amount of time too. I got to a point where I just. I don't think I knew how to get to the next mission or story thing, or it just like ended or something. I don't know if I finished it or not, which is well, weird game... for me to say in a game. That game is definitely not done. Um, it is it is known that that game isn't done. But I mean, if you get like seven years of development time and you're not finished, I don't know. Like, what at are some you doing, point, guys? What are you doing? Wow. I, I mean, they were building a new engine, but even then, uh, it's damn near a masterpiece. I mean, I really like Metal Gear Solid V, but I'm pretty sure... I like sure playing that, um, it when I, like I get to play it. I like playing it a hell of a lot, yeah. But, um, well, you get to play it a lot. That game is pretty gameplay intensive. I think that's why a lot of people don't like it as much because Metal Gear Solid is usually super duper story intense and that game is a lot more uh lacking in that regard. Yeah, um, I didn't know what the f fudge was going on half the time. No, I have what, no what's idea. going on? What does this mean? What's happening? I don't know. Can I just go back to sneaking around? Yeah. I don't need to go I want to go punch some Russians and some children. Yeah, normal stuff. Um, so what is the blue shell of Elden Rings? Uh, the death mechanic. Probably. By blue shell, in terms of it, it, it punishes you for doing well. I guess there isn't really anything that punishes you for doing well in Elden Ring. It's not a yeah. It's not a mechanic that is common in video games. Blue shell is pretty unique. Um, yeah. Well, then it, again, it's Crash specifically. Had a... Yeah. Crash out a blue electric ball thing that uh goes to first and zaps you. Um, Ouch. I remember Cra Crash out a Crash Team Racing is awesome. One of the really cool features that that game had was um depending on how much Wampa fruit you'd obtained, it would affect the attributes of the item. So if you had less than ten, it would kind of be like a nerfed version. But if you had ten, it would turn into a super duper version that would have extra. So like. There was, uh, instead of a banana, it was like a, a, a little vat filled with uh, some sort of indeterminate goo. Um, and the That's green goo, like not mine, was uh, this sort of like weaker one. But the red one, if it hit you, it would, it would uh, basically keep you going slow for like an additional 10 seconds after you recovered from the hit. Put like a little storm cloud over your head and, and you wouldn't move as fast. It's like, that's a really cool way 
to incentivize different methods of play by encouraging you to collect um, Wampa Fruit. Crash Team Racing is awesome. More games should have adopted the things that that game introduced. Like, its its boosting drift system is way better than uh, Mario Kart's, as much as I like Mario Kart's just core gameplay. Mm -hmm. Much more skill-based Crash Team Racing. It has a really high skill ceiling in reality. It's a game that's uh, got a lot of depth. Hey, maybe maybe that'll be Crash Team Racing 2 exclusive to Xbox. Maybe. <laughs> now, now that Microsoft owns Activision. Uh, where did you learn to be a crime lord? On a farm? I grew up surrounded by farms. Also, Animal of the Day is a giant isopod. A giant isopod. Get on it, Rags. Giant isopod. Oh, mm. these guys. Let me get like, you a good picture here. I think this might have been the base design for something in uh, Starship Troopers. Yeah, let me find a good... There's. Oh, no. It looks pretty cool. Oh, wow. Yeah, look at him go. Yay, yeah, I stalked like a... around in the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> Like That's a big old... like. Yeah. Yeah, he does sound... Uh, I was doing the Alan voice. Yeah, I didn't even realize. Yeah, look at me. I I got ten legs. How many legs do I have? Ten? Cross stations have ten legs, right? Or am I mixing them up? I think this... It looks like he's got more than ten. It looks, he looks like, like one it, of those... Oh, uh, it looks like he has twelve legs, actually. Yeah, six on each side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, we're talking. This one's got like ten on each side. Oh, I look, didn't even. They got a bunch. Count as many. Jeez, look at that. Yeah. Yeah, they got a bunch. They're like little. Uh... Yeah, they're, they're like the little. What are they called? The little roly poly thingies. Uh, centip uh centipedes. Oh, ar armadillos. No, the. Uh, just a second. That might be what they're called. They're, I don't know what the real woodlouse. Yeah, 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 yeah. The little Armadillo little boys. They roll cool. up and they turn into. Yeah, yeah there's like a big version of them. Yeah, it's like a big version of. Let me let me get you a picture here. Yeah. We get we get them around here every once in a while. You sort of see them out and about. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen those. But they're tiny, but these are like big versions of it. I was saying armadillos. They're pretty nifty. They're uh, they they're are little... very nifty. They're really cool little animals. I, I like the ones that have these weird gimmicks, like that it can roll into this bowl <laughs> and then it's protected. We it's get like, them. Uh, we get, get them around here. here. I'm safe. We got armadillos yeah. around here. Armadillo means little armored one in Spanish. I mean, I guess that. I mean, a lot of. Uh, I remember I learned this from uh, that. There's a lot of words in the American vernacular that are just derived from Spanish, like ranch. Uh, and lasso and um, bandolier, like all of these had uh, Spanish origins in the frontier. Hmm. Armadillo. What oh, a, rodeo what a as critter. Well. Yeah. What Armadillo a strange, feels kind of like strange creature. an Australian creature in America, you know? He, on, he went on holiday and he just decided to stay there. He's like, you know, it's nice out here. It's really warm and well, it's warm here too, but you know, <laughs> food's good. Yeah, yeah, everyone's nice. There, what a what a strange creature. It just says hi, Theo. Sure, Theo would have said hi back. Have you seen Shad's video on Elden Ring? I actually have. I have too. Yeah, he's done multiple ones, as far as I know. Yeah. I haven't watched. Well, yeah, it's, I, uh, it's, I think it is game, his, so. his uh, most controversial take. Um, yeah, it is. Um. I is it find what it's his, take? His perspective well, is very understandable. Uh, he uh, he finds that the storytelling is lacking in terms of the way that it's presented in the game, but that he thinks it's really cool as a, a piece of lore. You like that the world building's really cool, but you have to search for it outside of the game. I feel like that's like all the Souls games. It's more lore Pretty than much. story. Which I don't have a problem with at all. I think it's kind of neat. Like, you're dropped in this world, and if you want to figure stuff out about it, you can, and if you don't, then you don't have to. It's very realistic in that regard. 
Um, um, I guess it is. Well, so the interesting thing is, is that partly because of that conversation, Muller and I rewatched the cutscene, the opening cutscene for Dark Souls versus Elden Ring. Yeah. And I feel like Dark Souls does a much better job of telling me what the state, what what this world is. Here you are. Here's what's happening. We went over it briefly in the stream, and I think we triggered a couple I of people about oh, it. Because yeah. um, Dark Souls, they're both relatively simplistic, right? Dark Souls says the whole world is dead. It's like foggy and craggy and gross and dead. Dragons that are like immortal roam the planet, and that that is the reality of the world. Then there was a fire. And it grew, and from the fire came life, and uh, they were provided, I think, oh fuck, what do they call them, souls? Like, just lord souls from the fire? Very yeah. fantasy, because you're just like, okay, okay, okay. And then, the and then, Lord, then those lords they rose up, challenged the dragons, and won. Yeah, well, so this is the part where it starts to become a lot more conventional, it's like, one of them was like a, a a death god that could poison and destroy things. He was like a skeleton lord. One of them is a witch who just casts your good old fire spells. One of them is just like a king who can throw lightning spears. And one of them was a dragon that was born without scales that betrayed the other dragons and told the man, if you will, how to betray the dragons. There was a big fight, the dragons lost. And so began the Age of Fire. A whole kingdom was built. Everything was pretty good, and then the cutscene ends with saying the Age of Fire is coming to an end. There's like, we're running out. It's not looking good. It's like, huh. And then you spawn. You're not really quite sure what to make of all of that, but you eventually find out that it's up to you whether or not you want to continue the Age of Fire by sacrificing yourself and linking the flame, or you want to engage the Age of Darkness by ending the flame, snuffing it out. So it's like, okay. And then there's lots more lore and stuff that you can read throughout it. Um, Elden Ring... There's a meme video that's already been made, and you guys will be seeing it on our next meme fab, uh, where I try to summarize it. And it's like, so there was a ring, it got blowed up, and then yeah. a couple of bigger powers in the world scrambled to grab it, that were all demigods, like, like grabs shards. Then there was the Shattering, which was a big war. And oh, I've had one of those. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and most, if not all of them, died. And then it says... Wake up tarnished, which is what you are, and what are a lot of other people are, and they start listing all of the um the important tarnished, which are people who are supposed to go and fix the Elden Ring question mark. It doesn't really say this in the intro, it just says wake up the tarnished. And then it ends with saying like and then also you wake up. Yeah, because generally tarnished means is not good when something is tarnished. Yeah. Um so like the first question that a lot of people have is like, wait, so what is the ring? Um, what is like, and because it says like you need to go and stand, uh, stand up to the go go stand in front of the ring and become Elden Lord, and it's just like, huh? I don't and, wanna, and, but and, I don't want to be a lord. And Shad's issue was that uh, that intro cutscene plus. A decent amount of what you get from NPCs was just not enough for him to be driven to discover what the rest of the story was because he just didn't understand what the fuck was going on. And the trouble he's gotten into is a lot of people are saying, well, if you took the time to pursue certain NPCs, you would get your explanations. Um, and then his response to that was that they're off the beaten path or they're in places that are easy to miss, which he thinks is bad conveyance from the, the game. The game should make sure that you get at least the most important uh, parts. You know, flavor text for certain characters and what they did in certain areas at certain points. Like, he's fine for that to be stuff you search for, but he doesn't like the idea that when doing all the main quests, you can finish the game and have no idea what the Elden Ring even is. That's that's weird, and I, I'm inclined to agree with him. It's with it. unusual. There's something, it's, there's something kind of appealing about that in a way. This aspect of you could finish the game and not really know the story behind a lot of things. If you don't go and pursue them and seek them out. I think hmm. that uh, you can argue that it's a different way of delivering a story rather than a worse or better way. He many times says it's objectively bad storytelling, which has gotten him in trouble, Ooh, I think. I, yeah, I don't, um, I don't know about that. 
Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how you qualify that. In it's yeah. tough, yeah. Um, it, uh, definitely don't know how you can. All I would say is that he, he says at one point, if they did it more conventionally or straightforwardly, there would be a lot more people probably appreciating how good the story is because he said he read about all the story and was really impressed. He's probably right about that. If they If they delivered it in a more traditional way, I think more people would be talking about the story and the characters, because when I finished the game, I was in a call with, um, I think, Fortia Metal and Theo, and we were discussing the story. It took us about a minute, because none of us knew what the fuck happened. Which, um, you know, that's, that can happen, and you can make that choice for your, your players. I did try to talk to a whole bunch of people, but, like, what I found, and this is another thing that Shad highlights, is that, uh, there's a couple of NPCs that'll give you quite a bit of information about the lore, but they will just deliver it all. They'll just tell you, yeah. They'll just be like, in the great age of blah 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 blah, 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 blah killed blah blah blah, and then he went blah blah blah, and he went over here, and he did this, and he got this, and he did, and you're just like, uh huh. Yep. It's just a little bit more difficult to care about it, so. Uh, yeah. There is, it does add this nice, el- this nice element of discovery to the story, making the story something that is to be sought after and discovered. I mean, I would, I get that sentiment, I guess. It's just, you look at, like, Metroid Prime, the story is there for you to discover, but you also pretty clearly understand what your objectives are, like, in every game. In every Metroid game, really, you have a pretty clear idea of what you're supposed to be doing as, like, a central quest. I think that just helps as a guiding force to make it clear in your mind, like, what your prerogative is. It's a good way to flip it on its side, where you have all of these stories and movies and stuff where you have a character who has a very clear goal and they're very set on that goal, and then they get a cert- to a certain part in their journey, and then someone says, oh, yeah, you didn't know that this is the reason for this. And it makes them rethink everything because they just flat out didn't know about it. And to be able to put a character, like a, a player in that position, where it's like, oh, you didn't care to learn about all this stuff? You just went ahead with your goal? Don't Don't you... What do you mean you don't know about da 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 da? And they'd be like, oh, like that that would be a nifty thing to do to a player. Uh, um it, it, like I think that at its best is kind of what it's going for, but like unfortunately I was just thinking about it and I was like, I don't even know why I was motivated to kill the first boss. Um Because it's a game and that's just what you do. I'm well, Maybe I'm not even talking just, about no. like the tutorial boss. So you walk out of your spawn point and something attacks you. I don't think you need a huge amount of motivation to just be like, oh fuck, you know, this thing's trying to kill me. But like pursuing an adventure through a big castle to get to its leader and then kill him. Why was any of that happening? And yeah, the only answer really is like, well, it's a video game. It's like, oh, it's kind of strange for a game that's getting lauded for its good storytelling as well. I think. Um, because it's after you do that that you get a big lore dump on all the characters of the world and why you should kill all of them, I think. Um, and and someone else that's brought up is just that uh, I, I do think that the other games have done this same approach, but being a little bit more uh, straightforward that help you understand. Like, I was looking at the Dark Souls 3 intro, and that one, that game assumes you did link the fire at the end of Dark Souls 1, and it basically says that the world is almost done. Age of Fire is, like, on its fumes. Uh, everything's in cinders, and as an emergency, all the past fire lords are awoken to relink the fire, and uh, they all refuse. They don't. They don't. They leave their thrones. They don't want to link the fire. So you have to go and kill them all, collect their souls, and then link the fire yourself. Or, like the first game, uh, let the age of darkness happen. Essentially, which again, I was just like, that's really straightforward. I think. Um, Elden Ring, I just, uh, I don't even know what the Elden Ring did, or why it's important it gets reformed. I've, I've seen people talk about how, well, when it was destroyed, it destroyed the land or something, and I was just like, did it? Oh, alright, uh, oh. I didn't know. I, I, there's so much I don't know. And then, of course, there's a bit of a meme of, like, you just wait for Vati Vidya's video, and it's like, is that good that that's everyone's attitude? It's my attitude. I'm just like, I'll just wait for him to explain it to me. So, um, oh yeah, the cinematic trailer for the game's story is a better intro than the intro to the game. Which is awkward. I'm not even sure why they didn't use it. It's got, like, full-on animations and stuff in it. Yeah. That are in-game. Oh, maybe not in-game, but uh, representative of the world. But I don't know. Um, yeah, I think they could have just given a bit more information here and there about the fundamental stuff. And uh, we probably, I probably would have been fine with it, but I felt like I learned the littlest about Elden Ring compared to all the others in terms of story. Um, 
Nothing like home renovations while listening to EFAP talk Elden Ring for the next 10 hours. Hi, Free, Rags, Longman, and guests. Hello. Yo, Hi. Boy. But if Older Ring can be as good, does Easy Game not be better? If I, as I am filthy casual, is enjoyable less so for me because it's hard, should we wallet to such souls? Do appreciate Long, High Doge, Jermaine, and Spider Eater. Oh, hello. Hello. I don't know who the Spider Eater is supposed to be, but I'll say hi. Are they... Spider Eater is as well. Is in this riddle, delving deep, something to do with... Would it be better if it were easier? I'm not sure. No, not necessarily. I don't know exactly what they're trying to say, so I'm not going to assume they're saying anything like that. I just don't know what's happening in that one. I hope this will activate Fringy's weaponized, retarded tism. There's a full stop after that, so I don't know. Hi. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then, is a patty melter cheeseburger? I don't know what a patty hmm. melt is. Uh, I think it's more of a sandwich, a hot sandwich. Oh, alright. Yeah. You did it. Like a grilled sandwich? Like a, yeah. Like if you put meat in a grilled cheese, I don't think it becomes a burger. It's just a, it's just a grilled sandwich. I like a pastrami sandwich. Those are grilled, but they're not burgers. So I'll often be in the burger section on the, um, or the sandwich section or, or burger. I guess you can put them in both on a menu, but people know what they are. So. Thank you all for the hours of great entertainment playing Elder Ring, long man. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, and the subsequent stream, hopefully. Australia is like Elden Ring. Everything is always trying to kill you, and if you try to describe what it is attacking, you no one will believe the insanity of the creatures. <laughs> it's true. Nor the existence of the land itself. Uh, join the rags ranks. I don't do hard games. Don't want my mediocrity used as a club. That said, I wouldn't take away hard games and wouldn't force an easy mode on folks. Elden Ring is offending Twitter. I consider this a win. So I do oh. play hard games. Uh, I'm very good at video games. I play plenty of <laughs> difficult video games. I just, this one doesn't appeal to me. The Souls games just don't appeal to me. Unrelated to this stream, but I've been meaning to ask you guys if any of you have seen the animated Bat Metal music videos. Nope. Don't think so. No, I have not seen the Bat Metal. Hello, you toxic brood you. I heard you... Hello. I heard on your catch-up that you might watch Godzilla again. If you do, give the characters a closer look and provide a better opinion on them than boring humans, lol. I don't believe any of us have ever said that any any movie simply has boring humans. We'll usually talk Godzilla, about... Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Certainly not King of the Monsters. I still remember what we said about that. The main lady is absolutely insane. Her perspective on how to fix the world's problems is crazy as fuck, and she only learns that releasing enormous monsters on the world could cause some damage very late into the game. It's kind of hilarious. Yeah, I guess it means I guess it depends what you mean by boring. Um Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I guess I don't think she's boring. I just think she's nonsense. She's like, Yeah, I guess maybe it's because it got to that level of nonsense and just stupid where it was almost like I just can't even care about any of them anymore. The man was certainly boring. Oh, I mate, don't even he was know why he really hyper had generic. Harsh on anything. He, he got was really hero mad boy. He was always out of nowhere. Dude, he's like the main character in the Mortal Kombat movie, and he's just a generic man. Yeah. Who will help. And for why some reason, he gets Johnny involved. Why can't we have Cage in a Godzilla movie? That'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> or Kano. Imagine he was the main character in yeah. King of the Monsters. Imagine he was on like the the jet or whatever the fuck they were on when the pterodactyl. Oh no, sorry, when Rodan was was um, chasing yeah. them, and he's just like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck is this? <laughs> It'd be like really fun. Yeah. That would be really fun. Kano versus Godzilla. <laughs> yeah. It was when you were describing the ratio of monster fight to people talking. Well, yeah, it's insane. Um, There's way yeah, more... Yeah, it's like... Well, yeah, but the reason why we brought that up is because everybody it. praised the monster fighting. Everybody said Godzilla, King of the Monsters, was really great because it focused on... The monster fighting, the monsters. yeah. And it, Turns it, out it didn't. It flat out didn't. I think it was collected at, what, eight minutes? Uh, the whole movie was monster fight? Yeah, it was, it was like seven, sure eight minutes. Less. 
didn't Godzilla have like a full like twenty minute stretch there at the end when it was like hyper focused on Godzilla? And as far as I'm For aware, um, mm. Godzilla vs. No, Kong the, the first Godzilla. There's a lot. There's a lot more of a ratio to the crazy action nonsense. Right. Yeah, you get a lot of shitty human drama and just stupid nonsensical human crap. Exactly. It's not that. I don't know if I would say it's boring. It's just really badly done. I think I'm pretty sure that's what we kept having to reassure people with because they were like extremely dull. Yeah, sure. you don't. You are not invested in any of it. And that doesn't have to be very like that. To be. You can make interesting human characters, especially in a world you can, with yeah. giant fucking monsters. Humans can be interesting. Yeah, I like them sometimes. They're alright. Uh, have their moments. All the best, high metal. I'm sure he would have said hi. So, who has beaten the goddess of rot yet? She cool. Uh, everyone there had except, obviously, Rags and Ringy, I think. I think everyone had beaten her. She's a tough one. Uh, your Elden Ring streams got me through my daughter's stay at the hospital. She's doing better and playing it now. Thank you, Long Man. That's oh, very good. Excellent I'm to glad hear. That yeah, she's getting better. Yeah. Hope she likes very it good. and that she's still doing better. If you do movie faps of Walking with Monsters and Future is Wild, you need to see Animal Planet, a documentary about science-based aliens on a f on the fictional planet of Darwin Four. Hmm. Uh, maybe, yeah, sure. I'm not sure what we'll be adding up to in relation to all that. And uh, Theo is right about Clone Wars. Oh my! <laughs> bom bom bom. Like Rags. Hi, Rags. Hello. These games aren't for me, but I definitely loved watching Mola, as and others uh, in their playthrough. It's been super entertaining. Also, happy there's an EFAP on it. Cheers all. Um, yeah, I figured when uh, it was it was such a cultural impactful game, and I ended up putting over 100 hours into it, that I should probably maybe chat a little bit about it, since there's a chance to finally make an EFAP about video games. We don't get to do that often, you yeah? know? We were gonna do one for the Halo campaign, but we nobody were. played it. <laughs> so, yeah. it's such a strange reality, isn't it? You wouldn't expect that to be the problem. Well, yeah, because I didn't beat it and stopped like halfway. <laughs> Just gave up. Did you? Even yeah, I heard people it? say this is really neat for five minutes, and then everyone just forgot it existed. It's crazy, man. Halo yeah, Infinite yeah. has fallen the fuck off. Well, it only has seven thousand like concurrent players now on Steam. It's like. Man. <laughs> yeah, that game just died. It it's dead. Oh. What about um, MCC? How's that doing for numbers? Uh, MCC has never check. been doing great because they also kind of botched that one. Reach, when it released with Reach, it started strong, but then it really never recovered. Um, Is it more because... or less than... Uh... Halo, the I... Master Chief Collection has, yeah, 3,500 on Steam. Ooh. Yeah, so it's less. Yeah, Halo is in trouble um, in Damn, terms dude. of its long term. There's no way. There's no way. I remember, like, a couple of weeks ago or a month ago when people were like, yeah, but that's not taken into account Xbox. It's like, I, I don't give really... a shit. Well, so I just don't believe that it's going to be. I don't know why I wouldn't expect the trend to also be the same on Xbox. There are other games that you can play, and there they are. There's no content, no new content until. For like another week, another month and a half, I think, before the next big substantial, before the first, sorry, the first big substantial drop mm. is two maps. Which is, um, yeah, we're like, it, dude, this is like, um, yeah. Fall Guys. Uh, yeah, except they Fall Guys had more of an excuse. They didn't realize it was going to be a big thing and they're not a AAA development studio. The same problem of, Who had like, many, you, many years to make this. You, you know. gotta get going, guys. You just gotta get going. You this, gotta. It's all about momentum. You can't. You got 256,000 players on Steam maximum, and they fucked off because you yeah. didn't give them a reason to stick around. You absolutely yeah. squandered something that devs well, would just. Battlefield 2042 was a disaster, and Call of Duty Vanguard, from what I understand, people really don't like that one. It's like, this was your opportunity, and it's Absolutely. gone. It's, it's gone. It's gone. Um, Because you guys have already decided that you are locked in to Infinite for a while, um, but nobody's playing it anymore. Everybody's yeah, gone. you didn't give them enough content, the microtransactions are shit, and it makes me not want to play the game. Uh, apparently it's Halo just... Infinite fell off of the top 10 most played games on Xbox recently, it's like, man, Halo mm. used to be number one. Not even top that, 10. That shit used to move, that shit used to fuel consoles, yeah. and now it just... 
Now it's just like, oh, Halo, uh, it's a has been game. Microsoft needs to find uh, strength a studio who gives a IPs. shit. Wow. So, are you guys, uh, have you heard anything about the Perfect Dark reboot and what's been going on with that game? No, I haven't. What's going yeah, on? So, um, so, I remember a few months ago, we found out that Crystal Dynamics, the people who made Tomb Raider and the Avengers game, were brought on as like co developers for Perfect Dark. Um, to help out a new team that was called The Initiative. Now, I don't know if you remember this, but The Initiative was marketed as the first quadruple A studio. That was one the marketing gimmick for them, quadruple A. That's got a lot of connotations. Apparently, that team is like, half of the team has left. There's only like 50 people left at that studio. Crystal Dynamics have come in to basically help them make the whole game because nothing's happened progress has been incredibly slow um apparently microsoft is exceedingly lenient in this situation the developers who left are baffled that they haven't stepped in to like intervene that's that's what oh it's like so it's like halo infinite um well it would seem like yeah so well so what this is all based on what developers who've left the company said they said that they were told that it was going to be a collaborative space but it was actually very top down um that there was not a lot of flexibility in terms of like development. I think one of the creative directors of that game left as well recently. It's like, man, <laughs> I don't know when half your team is gone, you know, and like, like the lead developer, like the lead of the game is gone and you have to bring in another studio to help you make it. There's no way that game is like close. And this was announced, I think over a year ago. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's just like, um, I I guess um I had a perception I think like three or four years ago I think I said yeah give them like three or four years and Microsoft will have like all of their games ready now that they've got all these teams working on things and here we are like four years later and yeah, uh, that's a totally rational thing to think it just so happens that their teams are just making this stuff it just seems like um it just seems like they're not ready to capitalize on all of these investments that they've made um because the pace is just not there like you know like at at least like with sony the games come out pretty regularly because these are teams that are like they're there and they're working and they're consistently making stuff like an insomniac is churning out games at a pretty staggering pace um i don't know because halo infinite was six years of development um and we got i don't know where like, where's hellblade scratched. like that got announced like two years ago and it's nowhere to be found at the moment um they announced a fable game that's probably miles away um elder scroll 6 is my then again that was bethesda starfield but, well we got that's coming out this year so i guess i got that but that was a game that was being developed before bethesda was acquired so you know i, I don't know how much i would attribute that to microsoft you know I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <clears throat> don't know if it's been said before, but I think there's too many whirlwind attacks and roll spam. Uh, I assume um, they mean... does this little whirlwind spin as well, yeah. He do. He do be doing that. And I assume they mean, I mean... by roll spam that that's the solution to a lot of stuff in the game. Wow. Well... I mean, a lot of the enemies hold their arm up. I've seen it, Margaret do it like four or five times. He'll hold his arm up in the air and sort of walk around and not bring it down. And all I can think is, right, so this is... I'm not fighting a guy. This is a boss in a video game who is trying to take advantage of my roles. It's not very. It's not a very graceful thing, oftentimes. Someone said roll spam does not work. It, it can. It can work. Yeah. Uh, everybody's talking about Elden Ring while I'm still addicted to Destiny 2. The new expansion is by far the best it's ever had, but sadly the base game is still garbage. I love the game, but I can't recommend. Yeah, I've I, heard uh, it's gotten better, but yeah, that base game that. was a slog. Yeah, I made a review about it. Damn, that was not a fun experience <laughs> playing no, that game. No, it was not. Very That's, mediocre. Uh, we're digging into the lore there because this is before EFAP. I rags. I I wanted to review it and I asked rags if we wanted to do co-op on the campaign. And we did. And yep. Really... We played through the campaign co-op and I was. Yeah. I was never impressed. 
-hmm. from the get go, it was very mediocre. Yeah. Like, uh, oh, yeah, that was not. And then I think we did a couple of strikes and then it's like, yeah, so what are I think you were done and I'd said, I'm going to replay it again as a different class to see if that makes a difference. It did not. But it was a yeah, that was one of my biggest dull. problems is that the power, the, the, the classes, they have like one little ability. No, it takes really a long it. time for it to recharge and it's not that meaningful. So it doesn't feel like there's any real difference between the classes when it came out. I mean, there's only three classes, you know, like there's only three. That should feel really distinct from one another. Yeah. And they just don't. Uh, it's it's ninety eight percent the same with one little ability that was different, and it's just, and all the little mm -hmm. passives you unlocked were just so dull. It was just all dull. Mm -hmm. Give me a yeah. Make the three classes totally different from one another. Yep. Give me a reason to have one of each character on my hey, account. Hey, you know what? Give me that original story that you were going to tell about how the traveler was actually the bad guy. That would have been really cool. Damn, the destiny that we never got, that we never got. Oh, Allegedly, oh. that game had a story, uh, but yeah. it was basically just shoot the bad man. Well, so like I said, the the original story was, uh, yeah, from what I understand, the original story was meant to be that the Traveler was actually revealed to be like the villain and was the source of all of these problems for humanity. Um. And it's the reason why that rift area that they showed in one of the early trailers was a hub, because that was where you were eventually going to go at the end of the game when you discovered that. Um, there were cutscenes that we saw in like 2013. There was a whole environment on Earth that just wasn't there. Um, I feel like making the Traveler of the Bad Ghost too obvious a twist, but there's nothing in like the original. There's nothing there. It's just that there's an evil place in Venus and then you go there. Like, whether or not it's common, it's a story compared to what we got. It's a story. Because Destiny Our bar is high. doesn't have one. And I mean, yeah, it, was that it really is just, oh, no, review. there's bad men. Go shoot them. Oh, I could done? tell right. you about the fall of the Golden Age. I could tell you about them, but I won't. <laughs> it's like, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of that game. It is a story for another time. I mean, oh, no. it's the. Uh, because Joe Staten was, because uh, that was when he was still at Bungie before he left. And uh, I remember that he, the, the cited reason he gave for leaving was he wanted to, like, new opportunities, like, bigger opportunities. It's like, what's a bigger opportunity than then creating a whole universe from scratch for, like, a multi-million dollar IP? Yeah, that they'd say, know. we want to keep this in, to be, like, a 10-year project or something. What yeah, bigger like, shit? What do you have going on? Nothing. You don't have, come on. Well, it's it's just, I don't know, a confluence of all these things happening where, like, we have content that we see in 2013 that is just not in the game when we see it next in 2014. It's like something something happened. And so yeah. many prominent people leaving the studio. Like, well, I think Marty O'Donnell didn't leave. He was terminated. It, he was fired. And then that caused all of the problems there with, like, the music of the spheres and everything. It's a big old mess. And I don't know. I don't know. I was really, I was really hyped for Destiny. I was so hyped. I went to the midnight launch. I bought the two hundred dollars special edition thing with the little ghost. The disappointment set in eventually. Eventually, was that I your I learned my lesson game? Or it was. It was my learn my lesson. Because I think game. a lot of us have that I learned my lesson game. Um, yeah. I'm not sure what mine was. I might have. I might have learned it from. What was the space game? No Man's Sky. I never got, I never ah, played right. it or got into it, but I think I learned my lesson from it. Or maybe it was before, I don't know. But there was a I, point um, where I just stopped doing all the pre-order stuff, and I was like, nah. Well, I just, I so just the can't funny thing is, I think a lot of people, it was Watch Dogs. I like Watch Dogs. I actually like that game. I, uh, I had a lot of fun playing it. I, I think I, like, beat all of the side missions and did a whole bunch of the side content as well. Um, I like that game. Watch Dogs Legion, I've heard is, and Watch Dogs Two is like downright great as far as I'm concerned. But uh, um, I don't know what happened with that third one. It seems like a bit of a mess. Legion, Legion, where you can play as anybody. I don't know. That gimmick doesn't mean a whole lot to me. I think I'd rather have a fixed character. POV yeah, I don't know so. if. Yeah, it sounds good on paper. You could play as anybody, and I'm like, I don't want to play as anybody. Yeah. Give me, give me five good options. <laughs> you know, yeah, like exactly. Call it there. Yeah, give me, give me five good options.
A lot of people Mine are boring Fallout. assholes. A lot of so. people are saying Fallout 76. It's like, yeah, you guys must have been late to the party. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Fallout 76. I, I can see how a lot of people it would be Fallout 76. I can see it, yeah. And Cyberpunk was a lot of people's for the new one. Um, like a new experience of that. I guess it depends on how active you were in gaming spaces, whatever yeah, that was, yeah. yeah. Um, I will say, though, uh, we had been asked before uh, if you could get any game like as a redo my my answer was uh, Fallout seventy six. I think of all the games that have come out, I would want that one. We I want us to get a redo on that game. Hmm. I think like I would a good... want a redo on Destiny. Um, I think I yeah, that's another really good Destiny choice. In my Cyberpunk, head, but maybe Cyberpunk is a fair choice too. Yeah. Um. Well, do you don't want Amnesia Rebirth? Fuck no. Yeah. Let's make I'd, remake that I'd... from the ground up and not keep anything they had. And hey, I mean, you could do, because as much as I like Watch Dogs, it would have been cooler if they had uh, delved more into the um, hacking as a as a feature. They should have think about all of the features that are emergent in the world that you could have with hacking that uh, would be a little bit more involved. I remember Watch Dogs 2, one of the cool things was it had a lot more use of like drones and stuff uh, that you could use for a whole different purposes. 3D printing of like tasers. Um, yeah, I like Watch Dogs too. It was a cool open world. But I think that's probably... No, the last Ubisoft game was Far Cry 5. I think that was the last one I played, and it's like, yeah, you basically just make it the same thing over and over again. But, uh... Feels like nobody talks about Ubisoft anymore, though. You know? Like, they're just they just don't come up in the discussion. I um, think they get the, the whole meme thing about all their games are kind of the same. Well, it is a problem that they have. Um, I mean, yeah, and it's not. I never hear their games are bad. It's just that they're all just sort of meh. Yeah, well, no. they, well, and unfortunately, it is. It is. I love those games, but Assassin's Creed Two and Far Cry Three are really to blame for uh, for what happened to Ubisoft. They decided, um, yeah, instead of, yeah, I feel like some of those because I liked. Far Cry 5. I like I, Far Cry 4 and 5. They're, they're yeah, both, I, they're both fun. But I just... But then Far Cry, Cry 6, 3 again. That's I'm it. just... Yeah, which is fine to a degree. You well, know, it depends it on how much it adds to it, you know? I think it would be fine if it was just Far Cry, but, like, that's what all of them ended up being. Oh, Odyssey. That was the last one I played. I played Odyssey, and I liked it. Um, until I Origins the end, was the I was last like, Assassin's Creed I played, yeah. and I did like it. Well, the thing is, is that it, it would seem like what happened with Assassin's Creed is that they kind of wanted it to be The Witcher because it became a very different game. It Much definitely became different with Origin. Origin was certainly a departure from what it had been. Mm -hmm. Not for worse, necessarily, but it just became something different. Yeah. And I liked what it was, but it was almost like uh, this is Assassin's Creed in name only. Yeah, if this no was a standalone anymore. Egyptian adventure, I feel like it would fit more and make more well, sense. Well, I, I I know that this is kind of a death of the author thing, but I'm pretty sure that like, well, actually, I'm I, I'm not even pretty sure. Like, what Assassin's Creed now is is not what it was intended to be when they first made it. Um, there's like a, I remember there was a document that was made. By oh, like a stealth game. <laughs> wow, I mean there is that, yeah. But I mean it's even like other things too. The the idea with Assassin's Creed was always that it was meant to be rooted in um hi historical History. events to like an extent that is somewhat reasonable. Of course, they did have the um the like apples of Eden as the big intrigue, but you can see that there was a real attempt with like the earlier games to try and slot these yeah. into a world at the time. The, the Crusades, sense. the Renaissance, you know, yeah, the, Bushes, the American Revolution. Yeah. Even. Um, and now all of the games that they're making are before one. When one, the whole idea with one is that there was a real faction. The name Assassins is derived from the faction that the games uh, explore. In the yes. first game, anyway, the assassins who were fighting the Templar, the Templars who existed in the Crusades, and all extended from that point on. But now we've jumped well ahead of that. We're like thousands of years ahead. Yeah, it's, thousands, it's no, wouldn't it be uh, cool to have Assassin's Creed ahead. in this setting? Yeah, it's like it would be cool, but cool, what do we sacrifice to get that? Yeah, I thought we decided that Assassin's Creed starts with one, you know, like, but it doesn't. In fact, Assassin's Creed starts in ancient Egypt. Um, and it feels like there was more maybe it is just that when you're exploring periods like the renaissance 
that it doesn't feel as much like, ah, you're doing the thing when I'm meeting like the Borgias or the um the Medicis, that it kind of feels more natural as opposed to oh hey you're hanging out with queen victoria hey look that's napoleon bonaparte you met him it's like uh, all right <laughs> like just, all you, right, just, you just met napoleon does anyone just meet napoleon you know that yeah. kind of thing it's well it's just you meet all of the most important people in, in that time period instead um, of hey where... i ran into leonardo da vinci in his little studio and he helped me with the thing you know yeah. you're like okay yeah well, he's an active participant in the story, and you contextualize it with, well, he was an inventor. He had an Yeah, he was ahead mind. of his time, very innovative. He, mm -hmm. A true Renaissance man. Yes. In the Renaissance. And the, uh, he, the Renaissance men are coming, all right? Leonardo da Vinci rides in on his horse. Fire! <laughs> She's the heiress. That's your, oh, I told you, the Renaissance men were coming. <laughs> Not even of the era. All right, next super chat. Let's go. <laughs> I found the tree avatar really fun on horseback. Uh, I think they are fine. As we said, they're like asylum demon. Um, it's just there's loads of them, and they start to get tired. Uh, and then the big flaw, of course, is when they spam the um the scarlet rot spreading move. The later versions of them, oof, annoying. But uh, you know, they're not as bad as the ulcerated tree spirits. Yeah, I'll give them that. Hot Tech Syndicate was good. I disagree, but hey, I remember that. Oh, uh, I forgot I that review, existed. I did, Fuck, I did a this whole on time. Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I did not like it that much. Uh, Falling Star Beast is such a trash boss fight. If you're talking about Radan, I agree. Uh, though that's pretty controversial, too. I think we upset many people in chat when we said that Radan was shit. Um, it seemed that way. He's been, uh, he's the guy who was riding a little horsey. So. Yeah, yeah, no, I know him. With no he... feet, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Use gravity <gasps> magic, so stop making fun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> gravity magic to ride his little horse with no feet. So Wait, no, weird. sorry. So with no feet to ride his little horse, I, you gotta try and get him the right way around. Uh, H bomb he not here. I don't think H bomb guy's gonna jump on an EFAB episode. Uh. I wonder what he thinks about. of Elden Ring, though. I don't know. Maybe he'll make a... I mean, he might. He may well make a video on it, right? He may. Uh, I still haven't watched the Deus Ex one. I probably should. That'll be interesting. I need to finish it. I was liking what I saw so far. Uh, um, who knows what he ends up saying in it. I kind of appreciate that, that it seems like he's just willing... Because, I mean, talking about Deus Ex Human Revolution specifically, it's like, cool that you just felt compelled to talk about this game, even though it's, like, not really relevant right now. Yeah. Item of the day, Hollow Knight's Dream Nail, a blade that lets you read the current thoughts of those you strike. Unless they're dead, then you read their final thoughts. Oh, yeah, that was a cool item. I remember that. Yeah, that sounds finish neat. that game. Um, an animal of the day, the Pygmy Hippo. All Pygmy right. Hippo. Have a little look-see. Pygmy Hippo. Oh yeah, look at him. Seems pretty chill. Yeah, that's neat. Neat. Uh, aren't the plus one items in different areas than before? Oh, uh, the plus one items? Do you mean the, the stuff to craft with? Or do you mean weapons that are plus one? Or I'm, I'm not entirely sure. And do you mean, like, have they been updated to be in different places? I'm afraid I just don't quite understand the question. Um, only Mikalash's best Bloodborne boss. It's okay that you think that. No one's going to harm you for thinking that. So it's all right. You belong. Uh, you don't get anything from Genichiro. You get weapons and runes from Grafted Scion. I'm not sure. I can't remember who Genichiro is, but... Uh, yeah. I don't know if I've seen people defeat uh, Grafted Scion. It's, um, it's tough, but they can do it. In the opening, I mean. Uh, Demon Souls still has the best music. Maiden... Astria. 
And that's where it ends, so I'm guessing this ain't, is Maiden Astria the name of a song? I don't know. Uh, it's Boston, that game, I think. Oh, there you go. Uh, as said, I should stop by and say hello, happy Saturday. Well, how nice. Hello to you, and happy Saturday to you as well. Uh, Mola, how do we know you aren't the tentacle monster in every hentai? Explain yourself, schlong man bad. Because I just, I don't enter those sorts of mediums, you know? I stay away from them. They're scary. Who knows what goes on in them? Uh, glad to see you guys are still doing your best to keep subjectivity slash emotion from clouding your judgment of a piece of media. Love you all. Melania and Malekith are the best bosses IMO. Also high rags. Hello. Yeah, we just try and make sure we're not being too biased from stuff. Figure it's a yeah. strong way to get conversation going. You should watch Matthew Matosis' video, The Lost Soul Arts of Demon Souls. I'm interested in your take on it. Yeah, I've um, seen that one. It's yeah, there's a, so the, the, the general sentiment is just that they used to create them as a form of uh, innovating on video games. Like, what can we do about this thing that's expected by players and how can we turn it on its head and create new experiences? Meanwhile, I think he and uh, Theo certainly believe this, that now it's more so just about refining the thing they made that was really popular. Uh, instead of Dark Souls and Demon Souls being created in a world where a game like that is absurd and crazy and why would you want to design things this way? Now we're at a point where everyone really likes that design. And so it doesn't feel like that same motivation is there anymore. Uh, the only thing I take issue with is that some of the stuff he would classify as like really cool and interesting innovations include stuff like Mikolash. And it's like, uh, okay, so when is it just terrible? When is it that... You just start the game, and it, it crashes your PC. That's innovative and weird, isn't it? And it's like, yeah. It's really taking a series in a new direction. A bold <laughs> new direction. A bold new add. direction where it just blows your computer up. It's like, well, you weren't expecting that. It's like, no, I wasn't. I was not expecting that. Um, And yeah, I just don't think of what we've gotten in... Like, Dark Souls 3 is often considered Dark Souls 1, but refined. Everything is working as best as it should be, but it doesn't really have anything in it that's like, oh shit, they're doing this. And the most you can say for Elden Ring with that regard is like, they added a jump. It's like, yeah, they did. I don't know. And, and, and it's like, is that a problem? It's like, I guess not necessarily. It's just something that a lot of players were looking for, which was um, new ideas to come from From Software because they... They were innovators back in the day, but right now they are refiners, I would say. A good version of Elden Ring's opening is Sultan Sanctuary's first boss, the Unspeakable Deep. Okay. I can't do anything with any of that. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys know anything about it. No, I do not know about the Unspeakable Deep. Also, animals of the day are the Siphonophores... Oh, it's just the Sif. Okay, so what are the Siphonophores? Let's have a look. It's a dinosaur, right? Uh, considering these like Google image are... results, I don't think so. Oh, I must be. This is. Oh, a... no, it's actually. it's. it's... Oh, I remember because I Curse Kazakhs talked about them. They're like these little floating things in the deep and they illuminate to attract little fishies and then they grab them and eat them. So this is a friendly creature. Uh, I mean, I guess from, it's friendly to itself, yeah, I guess. Mm. It should be curiosity killed the fish. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. And, uh, hi, Rags. Hello. Been loving Elden Ring. A little bummed they nerf Horfrost, Horfrost Stomp. Yeah, sorry about that. A lot of people would have suffered. A lot of people were using it. It was kind of neat. Nah, he was talking about Soul Series being about using logic, and now it's about pressing the dodge button at the right time. I think you should watch the video again. Um, believe me, when he talks about the lost arts of Souls games, he's talking about innovation instead of refinement. Maybe you should that watch it again. Me, 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 me. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot more than just the combat being uh, roll when needed. Uh, Wings quote, Life's not about what you have. It's about who you have and how much you love them. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, he, was, bonus, he must have been though? quoting somebody else. And then, bonus Wings quote, I hope your parents die. I hope you live 
live the rest of your life without them. Well, <laughs> what prompted that? I think I know why those quotes have paid up. Oh, man. He's grown as a person. <laughs> what just, like, where does that come from? <laughs> Anger. Frustration. Uh, the Elden Beast reminded me of a Sonic the Hedgehog boss. What, uh, Perfect Chaos? I don't know, yeah, maybe. Um... Theo was saying it was very reminiscent of something from Princess Mononoke, but I haven't seen it. Restraint, lol. DS2 guys were the main designers. If they were, they did a way better job than they did with DS2. Um, which doesn't really surprise me, because they were probably given a lot more time this time around. Um... Thoughts on the recent patch, buffs and nerfs. Also, what do you think of the early rune exploits, like getting 40 levels of runes in a few hours? I don't know what to think exactly. Once you know where you can go to grab loads of powerful early game stuff, does that hurt the game? Feels like it might. Uh, you can do this in pretty much all the Soulsborne games, but... Uh... I don't know if it's ever been to this degree, because there's open worlds, so you can go to, like, really late game places and just grab uh, runes to, to pop really early. And so, I, yeah, I don't know, man. Kind of tough to say. As for the buffs and nerfs, I mean, I really do think that they've nerfed a lot of the ashes. I think they need to be further nerfed. They've nerfed blood and bleed. I'm still checking it out right now on a current playthrough, and it's still, um, still hyper-effective. So, like, they know these things are broken, but they're just trying to figure out how much they should nerf them. Uh, as for what is correct, it's a little bit complicated. Um, from everything I can tell with Ashes, they shouldn't have let them be upgradable, and instead made them tiers and restrict them with FP slash arenas. Yeah, it's like they're half and half kind of there, right? They, they don't let you use them when they think it would be broken to use them. But for some reason, they don't realize that they've left it in a lot of places where it's still totally broken. Uh, that, on top of the fact that all of them at a base level, would probably be more balanced than letting them upgrade all the way to plus 10. Once you do that, the, like, the Mimic one, for example, is just so powerful. Uh, bleed builds break PvP. It's downright unfun when everyone is using the same bleed weapon. So this is something Theo was, uh, mentioning, and on my recent playthrough I grabbed these little Wolverine claws. I thought they were neat, so I decided to use them. They cause bleed, just on their own, and I was like, alright, well, that's a benefit, and bleed, um, in case anyone doesn't know, like rags, for example, it's like it applies a number to an enemy, and once that number reaches okay. a certain amount, they drop, I think, 10% of their health as one big bleed hit. It's like, you know, you, you, okay. you slash them, it a, does... And it's by percentage? Yeah, like, if I slash him, it'll do 10 damage and apply 15 bleed, and then so if I hit them enough times and I get that bleed number to 100, it'll go boop, and it'll take off, like, a chunk of their health. So That is a bizarre way to have bleed happen as a mechanic. I've never... Because in everything that I've ever played, bleed is a, a, a very small but constant damage source that they take. And generally, it stacks through. It stacks with consistency, or sorry, it stacks with intensity, mm -hmm. uh, not duration. So if you have, if you are playing um, Risk of Rain, for instance, a target will take X, like a, a couple little ticks of damage per bleed stack. So it benefits a lot from applying many, many stacks of bleed constantly. Or you'll have mm. a game where it's like, like in Guild Wars Two, where it does the same thing, where bleed is a, a long, drawn-out condition an enemy can have that applies a small amount of damage over time. It doesn't just hit... It doesn't burst... Yeah, burst damage for bleed is a very odd concept. And I think it would be Dot instead, but they've got, um, they've got Poison, Scarlet Rot, and Rot as mechanics, and all three of them do Dot instead of uh, Burst. And so I guess they just went with Bleed being Burst. Maybe. I know in a, like a Guild Wars 2, for instance, the damage over time effects, they're, they're all different in the sense of bleeding is, it's, the duration is longer, but it does lower damage, where burning is a much shorter duration per stack, but it does a lot more damage. Um, mm -hmm. Torment 
will do extra damage on enemies that are still. If you move, you will take less damage from it. Poison uh, does damage over time, but it reduces the amount of healing that you take by 50% or whatever. So every kind of damage over time, it has some extra effect to it. It's not just flat out damage over time. And what's interesting is I'm pretty sure the bleed is percentage damage. Therefore, you can have like it the scales lowest... scales amazingly well. Yeah, well, you can, you can just have... As long as your weapon's applying bleed, it doesn't matter if it's dealing no damage. You'll eventually kill them because of the bleed stacks. Um... Which is That's strange. Generally, it does a flat amount instead of percentage wise, because again, percentage wise, it is those are huge. Those are super important in games because of scaling. It's not a flat number. It's by percentage. Well, and you got that right. And and so I was looking at my weapons. I was like, what can I do with them? Ashes of War is kind of a it's kind of a variation on an older thing. I think people were saying it's, it was present in the other games. So I don't think it's in DS One. I'm trying to remember where it started, but. You essentially apply a weapon art, um, which means like an extra move your your thing can do. It could be that you jump and slam down to the ground and it does just a bit of AoE damage, or you swing, swing, swing real fast, but it costs FP is the point, which is like your mana. Um, there's some, though, that you can get, which I got for my Wolverine Claws, which just makes it like a frost variant, and so it applies frost damage, but it also still applies bleed damage. Now, frost, or frostbite, very different from bleed. It applies a number, and once that number reaches a point, it'll take a chunk of their health off that's percentage-based. Very different than bleed. Um, when you have both of those running at the same time, uh, and you get the boss fight right, you just fucking annihilate them. They can't do anything. So, seems seems something may not be the way it's supposed to be. I don't know. Because the conclusion you, gotta, you have is that surely the developers don't want us nuking the bosses with, like, standard equipment. You'd think. You'd think. Uh, it's hard to tell. When, when, when talking about the kind of conditions, because, like, I, I think Gilgris 2 is a good example, it tends to be, because you, you have essentially two DPS types, broadly speaking, which are power and condition damage, which you probably know what that means, um, where one will, I will hit you with my whatever weapon and it will do a lot of damage, and the other is I will continuously apply stacks of condition damage to you to do my damage over time. And there are ways that they play with condition damage in terms of you can have enemies take your boons and turn them into conditions and vice versa, you have characters who can give themselves conditions and then send, or like they use an ability, but it gives you conditions, but you can find a way to transfer those conditions to enemies. So that will affect sort of the order at which you will use your abilities and stuff. Um, there are ways to like, like there's always, there's like, there's a lot of thought that's placed into not just, oh, just hit him a lot and give him a lot of this thing and then it does a lot of damage. Like, there's there's more depth to it than that. You gotta be careful with that, I guess, when, when you're talking about these negative boons and these conditions, or else they could get out of whack, like bleeding seems to be. Well, and some people are saying that Frost doesn't just take a chunk of their health off, it also makes them weaker, their defenses are weaker, just overall, so you'll hit them more after you've applied Frost as well. So it's just like... Uh -huh. I, mobility is another... <laughs> Uh, conditions you can have, and uh, yeah. Oh god, sometimes I forget that Muller is just a millennial gamer geek at heart. I mean, I, I, uh, I like playing You're new games, really I don't really mind. I think a lot of people play anything that comes out, unless, does that mean something else? What does it mean to be a millennial gamer geek? What is that? No idea. Hmm. I don't actually, yeah, like I said, I, ha I legitimately do not know what that means. I could not tell you. That is. If uh, it means you jump on new games, I do indeed. Yes. I like new games. Mm -hmm. Uh, boop boop. It's just like DS3, they refused to nerf bleed, and the updates ended with bleed builds being OP, and that's all the meta builds were in multiplayer. Yeah, maybe they just want it to be this way. I don't know. Um. Rags, I've seen your favorites on FA. Oh, alright. Oh man, King is so good, but way too underpowered as a boss. 
Oh, Omen King. Uh, do you mean the... Cause, uh, the the Capra Demon sort of guy is called Omen something, but Omen King... I'm not 100% sure who that is. One sec. Omen King Elden Ring. Oh. That would be Morgoth. Uh, yeah, his That's, health. So there's Margot and Morgoth. <laughs> yeah. Uh... <laughs> You also fight like a some weird version of him again, and when you get to the outskirts of the capital, it's kind of strange. But uh, mm. yeah, his problem seemed to be that he just did not have the health to to certainly not against ashes, but maybe uh, because I'm doing a run now with no ashes, and I think I'm having a lot more fun engagement with the game. Um. Anyway, funny YouTuber of the day is Circle Tunes HD. All right. I. Feel like wait, hold on. Have I heard of that channel? I don't know. Uh, no, actually, I I haven't. I mean, I I, I, I don't know about them. The little cartoons about uh oh wait no I think I have seen the, the the little little cartoons about video games. Neat. Yeah. Uh, and the long YouTuber of the day is Windigon. Windigon, I guess. Uh, you guys heard of Windigon? No. I don't... Doesn't ring a bell. I'm not sure about that. Um, and uh, hi, Theo. Of which I'm sure he would have said hi back. The tiny rat miniboss in Hades is more difficult than Gideon. Uh, in Hades. I don't... Did either of you guys play Hades? No. No, I have not played Hades. I have not either. Uh, I think Metal has. But, um... I'm pretty sure he has, yeah. Oh, and Metal said Wendigoon is cool. Wait, is it Wendigoon or Wendigon? One of those two. Everyone's I saying do not know, yeah. Okay. Um... But yes. Uh... I hear Hades is good. Should, That's what uh, I've heard. Yeah, I should play it at some point, I'm sure. Okie dokie. The law is literally mastered gravity to ride his horse, and you learn that after you learn he's gone insane with time and rot now. It's hilarious. It is kind of hilarious, yeah. It is funny. It is an odd visual. Mm-hmm. Uh... I just realized, by the way, the clock's... Are moving tonight for Britain, which means wait, is it tonight or is it Saturday? I think. Wait, what's that? Sorry, the clocks. If it's Saturday, well, because I was just thinking, like, what should I tell people is the start time for EFAP on Saturday if the clocks move back or four on Saturday? Hmm. Saturday night, Same I think they move, so I should be. I or... think it's the last week. I can say it's um, it's GMT. It's going back to BST soon. I think that's the idea. So you're moving, you're moving forward an hour then. Uh, I believe so. Which means I have to wake up an hour earlier. <laughs> All right, it begins. And then you okay. have to go another hour earlier once you do your clock. Once mine switches, yeah. Oh yeah. boy. Back to them early mornings. <laughs> uh, can we talk about how Radon turns into an ICBM? It's pretty spectacular. A little bit absurd, but that's fine. He's a big magical creature that runs into space and then crashes down to Earth, I guess. You know. Yeah. Um, the, only, the only reason people like Radan's design is because his law, Because of his law, which is ridiculous on its face. It was a little, little silly to read, yeah. I just, I just, you know. It seems that there's a lot of... Maybe he's like a point of contention for the fans, I don't know. Radan is a good boy. He loves his horse. Clearly. Clearly, I'm sure of it. Um, you know, A Knight's Tale with the Joker, Vision, and Robert Baratheon? Most underrated movie I know. EFAP movies? Also, where's Shad these oh, days? Oh my goodness. You're, you're in luck. We've already recorded EFAP movies for that very movie. Mm -hmm. and oh, yeah. I believe, uh, was that with Shad and Drinker and Sargon? I think, I think so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, things are on the way, perpetually. 
Blythe is more of an Artorius than Radan in both lore and tragedy. I mean, he doesn't... Yeah, he looks way more like an Artorius than a Radan. He doesn't... He doesn't have a little horse that he rides on this with gravity magic, you know. There's things about him that... But yeah, maybe the lore-wise probably connects better as well. Uh, Soul of Cinder is a great... Is great for a final boss. Its first phase is the four general playstyles players beat Gwyn in in DS1, and then the final phase is using Gwyn's own move set as if an in attempt to stay alive. Uh, yeah, a load of thought went into the final boss, and I think even if people considered him too easy, they still appreciated the uh, the ideas behind I him. I found him pretty hard, honestly. I uh, I struggled with him compared to some other bosses. Like I found Abyss Watch is a lot easier. He was uh, a lot harder. No, wait, no, a lot easier. Sorry, yeah, yeah, a lot easier. I think um, I beat Solar Cinder first try, but I was like, that was a great boss, which doesn't happen very often. That's why I asked the question about that. I was like, do you beat many bosses first try that you think are great? It's like it doesn't. Oftentimes, if you you know floor them, then you don't even get to know what they do. But I think I had trouble with them and only just made it. Um. If you're done with Elden Ring Morley, play Hollow Knight, preferably on stream. Also, uh, oh wait, well that's that's the first part, and yeah, I'm I'm interested in playing it properly at some point. Um, it's a cool game. Uh, and then and there's a special Evo of the day: all Toundros slash aliens play spore with humanity. Uh. <laughs> I'm a little confused by that. Yeah. Um, Neuro Automata stream? Highly recommend, like Elden Ring, but better. Never played any Soulsborne stuff. Oh. Um, how do you know it's better then? Oh, but, uh, fair enough. I hear good things about it. Uh, should I, before buying ER, to fully enjoy it? Oh, they're saying, should they play any other Soulsborne stuff? Well, um... I'm at the point of just saying, if you've seen people play it, you should be able to gather whether or not it's the kind of thing you might enjoy or not, um, I'd imagine. As for whether or not you should play other ones first, uh, I feel like you'll be okay both ways, I don't know. Because uh, once I you watch... You'd probably be okay. Yeah, once you watch a couple of hours of someone playing Elden Ring, you've probably got an idea of whether or not it's for you, right? I think. I would imagine. Also, you dumbos are on Elden Ring when DDLC needs playing. Hop to it. <gasps> well, maybe one day. We we've definitely been told to watch that. That is definitely mm -hmm. something. Uh, Crucible knights are just worse black knights that you can't backstab and stagger that much. I hate it. I gave an audible groan every time I see one. Uh, y yeah, Crucible knights have gotten a lot of criticism. Um, I don't think I hate them, but they they give me trouble. Uh, I don't know. Hard to say. Uh, Crucible Knight is the prime example of why combos need to be limited and some combinations of attacks shouldn't be put together. I assume what they're referring to is how certain enemies can, like, do a two-hit combo or a three-hit combo or have pauses in between and it just completely throws you off because um, you don't exactly know where your opportunities lie. Uh, an hour behind, but the worst part of the game is the input delay for heavier weapons so you can't even dodge on time often and take unnecessary hits. That's actually something that I'm not a huge fan of. Sometimes they'll queue up orders you've given your character. If So say, for example, someone's about to hit me with a weapon and I spam roll. Unfortunately, they hit me. If I spammed just long enough after they've hit me, my character is now going to roll the second that that becomes available, even though I've stopped hitting that button and I want to do something else now. Um, it's like it's added to a queue and the game is like, don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll put that in as soon as your character is able to do it, which can be really... Great for you, I guess, but also detrimental as hell. Uh, I think, yeah, someone just said stored inputs are the worst, which I think is what I'm referring to. There are a lot of yeah. situations where you will kill yourself because the game is like, I'll do what you just said. And you're like, no, I don't want to do that anymore. That's not, that, was, that was back then. That was a second ago, which, by the way, is like a million years in action fucking games yeah. like this. If, it's, if you're going to have a queued input, then there needs to be ways to cancel what you've given. And there needs to be a, a a pretty small window on what actually is queued up. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's not... You, you have to definitely make your game with that in mind. But most importantly, there needs to be a way to essentially cancel what you are doing at any point. 
Apparently buffering is the term. All right. Uh, I don't like that as a term. I it feel doesn't like... quite evoke the thing I'm talking about to me, buffering. Uh. Yeah, queued, yeah, yeah, queued inputs is a really good way to describe it because you have made an input and the game in is queue. queuing it up. Yeah, yeah. Instead of doing it as they happen. And if you, because yeah, generally in games, if you tell your guy to do something and they can't do it, it just doesn't happen. Mm hmm. Buffering is lag. Queued inputs are intentional. That's this is what I that's why it evokes to me the yeah. wrong thing, yeah. Um Perceptor Miriam is unironically the worst thing I've ever fought in any game. Insulting design. Uh I fucking hate her. And everyone hates her. She is a horrible piece of game design in one area of this enormous game, and everyone hates her. Uh it's like they involve these things just to piss everyone off. I just don't get it. Uh, she's just a poor man's Mikolash, not as cool or anything close to how awesome he is. I, uh, so, he's not very awesome, but at least he had his own location, cutscenes, and a uh, very, you know, straightforward method of killing him. Miriam is someone that I think a lot of players don't even know what the hell they're supposed to do with her. Uh, while she annihilates them with loads of spells. Mikolash just runs away, so you can, you know, at least try to figure it out. Instead of, while you're trying to figure it out, you're also losing shit tons of health. Uh, everyone hated that, yeah. Why does this world have weapons like katanas and a sword called the Zweihander? Do the devs just scatter random shit in for fun? Um, yeah. Basically. Because it's not at all based on our history, this world. You just have to believe they also hmm. happen to have these weapons in their world. I can believe that they have a big sword. I, I think I, they, they're literally talking about the names they're giving them. The name? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it would make it, sense it, it, if they did not have human names, so to speak. Uh, Zweihander implies German spoken history. Katanas imply different smithing techniques. Um, some misbegotten sing in Latin. Why? I have not got answers for you on that one. I think they're just melding cultures they think are pretty neat. You know what? What is the... Uh... What's the um from software? They're Japanese, right? Yeah. How come nobody ever tells from software to stay in their lane and stop making these stop appropriating these super culture. West, yeah, stop appropriating Western culture. No one, no one ever tells them not to do that. Maybe because they like their work. And that's it. <laughs> Just like if you like, yeah, if I, if you do something I like, then I'm okay with it. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. You you never you you never really hear it about like from software, do you? Never really do. They get a pass for some reason. They hmm. they west of booze. West of booze. My God. Yeah. Uh, I do think some bosses are good, but because they're reused a lot, it ruins the novelty of them and makes them look a lot weaker because of it. That and arena size. And the funny thing is, I don't even know if you're saying the arenas are too big or too small. I, I, I actually don't know. As for um, boss repetition, yeah, it, it can have effects that are not preferable. Uh, forget Fringy. The only goo that I'm interested in is the kind you get from milking Jay's Rhino, if you know what I mean. Oh. If you know what I mean. That's a thought. He's got a big horn, that Rhino. I have the self-imposed rule of no summons on first-time bosses. Any repeat bosses, I go summons. Uh, interesting rule. I don't, I don't think it's that bad. Yeah, you do it. The Ashes, I think, are a response to the people who supported the no easy mode argument. That's what I'm guessing, too. It it's an easy mode across. without an easy mode. Yeah, it's... It is an easy mode without an easy mode. And this is the thing, people who are like, it is not easy mode, it's a part of the game. I'll just be like, I mean, that is... That's, I mean, uh, easy <laughs> mode is a part of the, yeah, the game. Like it, so, yeah, that's what, like, an unbalanced game. You could say something... At this point, it's tomato-tomato. It's literally just, it doesn't change what it is. It's just whether or not you say uh, that it that it's a certain thing. It, it's effectively easy mode. Like I said, it's, it's their easy mode without putting in an easy mode. 
Just because you don't select easy at the difficulty selection when you start a new game doesn't mean the game can't have an easy mode. There's a reason why when things are often unbalanced, gamers refer to them as easy mode. Because it's effectively what it turns the game into. Uh, Mark, to be fair, you're a cripple in leg movement, to my knowledge. You're not like Donovan, who requires a special controller and scheme to play the games. By the way, he's still better than 95% of journalists. Um, I assume he meant that jokingly, because obviously not having one of your legs is not gonna... It's not the same as needing, like, a special controller, because, you know, yeah. something. I, I assume it's just a little, having a little fun. Uh, have you seen The Devil All the Time? Thoughts? I'd be interested uh, in seeing it. I've been told it is a movie where Tom Holland is very much not your standard Tom Holland performance. That's reason enough to give it a shot. Sorry. But no, I have not seen it. Uh, just don't use life gems. Hi, Rags. I remember uh, the argument. Uh, I remember everyone saying it's like, just don't yeah, use just the don't healing. Use and at that point, yeah. is any game truly... Anything. Just don't use the unbalanced <laughs> thing, and every game is balanced. Uh, not sure I really care for that argument. And I, I've said before, if you unlocked the life gems when you beat like the 90% way into the game boss or something, I'd just be like, yeah, it's mostly fine. But you get it after the tutorial boss, I don't see how that's a thing that you... It's just like, yeah, just don't use it. It's like, okay. Uh, don't use anything but a club. No hit run or bust. I mean, yeah, if you want to make the hardest challenge. See, to me, this is like, yeah, you, you just add the word challenge on the end of any any of these restrictions. It's not the game. We're talking about the game. You know what I mean? Come on. Uh, counteract the just don't use it. It is in the game and a problem. It's still something to critique. It has to be talked about so it'll be, uh, the, then it can be fixed. You can't dismiss a problem or you won't, it won't be fixed. Yeah, and, and we're strictly talking... It's not even the mechanic I don't like. I like it. I just think it needs to be balanced if we're talking about the ashes. It's too unbalanced. When I unlocked Tish, I was just, like, fucking blown away that they gave her, a, or he, I don't even know, um, an ability that can just chunk... Remember when I was showing it on stream? Like, the final boss, Tish was just sh shredding it. Uh, I didn't have to do anything, really. The just don't use it argument is part of what ruined Pokemon for me. The argument shows a lack of standards and giving creators an out. You're doing the creators work for them, and that's not how a game should work. Again, if it's on the players to restrict themselves, then what does balancing even mean? I just don't, I don't understand anymore. There wouldn't be any efforts from the devs to do any balancing at all. It should just be on the, on the community's uh, part to do it all, I suppose. Tisha yeah, is a lady. At this lady. point, just make sandboxes for us to play with. Yeah, we'll take care of everything else. Each pit, with, by the way, that can happen to some degree. It's funny, like, uh, LOL has a popular mode called ARAM, which is just one lane and everyone just keeps fighting again and again. Back in the day, they only had Summoner's Rift, and people would create custom matches, and then everyone has to agree, like, on an honor system to only go to the middle lane. Everyone's in the middle lane, they fight like that. That's where ARAM was spawned from. And so you'd be like, that's like a self-imposed community sort of restriction. It's like, yeah, but they were just waiting for the devs to make the mode for them. And then they did. Like that, you could argue it could be framed as a problem with the game, that they're not given this obviously fun and cool mode or something like that. And I think that's how everyone would frame all of this. That there would be people who are very unhappy about losing their Ashes effectiveness if they were to update it. But I mean, it can't be intentional that you can ignore bosses with them. Unless it is the journalisms which makes us wonder right we don't want them to have so much influence that they can make it so that the games are trivial mm -hmm. Tish paired with the black knife super melts bosses like they are normal enemies also I wish Bully Maguire was a spirit ash oh yeah that'd be great and um yeah there's a lot of different ways to destroy everything in the game I'm pretty sure Pizza Cutter was like one of them and that was given to me as well. It wasn't like a huge find or anything. The uh, game doesn't have widescreen support. Just don't use it. <laughs> well, enemies can't deal with R1 spam. Just don't use R1. Game is poo. Just don't play it. What I mean, this, this logic is weird. 
Be a chump. Also, you can only summon around those little obelisk thingies. How is there one in the Elden Beast arena? It's not even lore consistent. I think it's fucking weird that they wanted you to summon ashes in the final boss. Really weird. You'd think that would be the time where they would be like, now you have to nope. use everything you've learned yep. to, buy, to fight it yourself instead of relying on, you know, Oleg or Mimic or whatever else. Yeah, like, imagine we were all saying the dodge is just too OP and no nothing can hit you, and then they're like, yeah, but if you didn't use it, that wouldn't be true, would it? Like, well, Yeah. Um, <laughs> Fringy, Tetris if, if, has spinning if we, exploits. Yeah, if... Um... I mean, depends on whether you consider them exploits, it's part of the game. What do they mean by spinning exploits? Uh, when you, like, spin rapidly, uh, like a block before it goes down, it gives you a lot more time to figure out where you want to put it. Uh, and sometimes it can get you out of a bind. But, um... Wouldn't that be, um, game-dependent, because there's so many different Tetrises? Uh, it would depend on, like, the modes that you have or the variables at play, but I mean, it's, I would say that's a part of the game a lot of the time that you can spin, and then that gives you a little more time to figure out where you want to place your block or just slows things down. Yeah, because um, if it's, it's in it's every a, Tetris game, then that sounds like it's on purpose. It's like a feature. Yeah, I, I, um, I'm not sure that if it's in every Tetris game, it'd be hard to say. Uh, and then if really. it isn't, then I guess that's only an exploit for the ones that it applies to. If mm -hmm. it's an exploit at all. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like, um, is BXR an exploit, you know? Hmm. Goldeneye, no I mean, it odd... is, but, you know, it's, it's something that became, like, a, a core mechanic that a lot of people utilized in competitive. Goldeneye, no odd job allowed, isn't the same as Summon Ashes. So I guess they're saying, like, it was, like, a, an almost agreed-upon thing with people that you wouldn't play as odd job because his hat would be an insta-kill on, uh, Goldeneye, I think, and that made him... I thought, was he the little... No, it's Nick Nick. Okay. Odd job is the one with the hat. Okay, gotcha. Uh, something being unbalanced is inherently a flaw. Oh my. I don't I think it depends know. on a lot of context. Yeah. Uh, it says, hard disagree. Sekiro is the best From Software game because your toolkit is so narrow. It lets your... It lets the developers design fights to account for one strategy instead of five. That doesn't sound... that sounds like an alternative, not like a... I don't know that that's necessarily better or worse, really. And then they say tighter combat by far, which... that could be very well true, I haven't played it. I've heard people combat compliment... Is different, that's for I've, sure. I've heard people compliment the combat in that game quite a bit. Uh... Why is chat always pure tism? Because... they wouldn't be chat. If they weren't like that, all right? They gotta have their crazy opinions and their super rational opinions. It's a big ol' thing of stuff. Uh, general YouTube chat, why are you so stupid? Why? Why are you the way that you are? Oof. Super chat's going to war with chat, you know? Yeah. Uh, you can just invite players who kill the boss for you in every DS game easy. With choosing not playing with others, you're already putting yourself at a disadvantage. Yeah, uh, I, I know that people, for some reason, believe that that is like the ultimate counter. The thing is, it's a, it's a mechanic that applies to like a level of connectivity, multiplayer, PvP, like there's all these elements that come on across it, and I actually still think it is an exploit to invite a friend who is like 10 billion levels ahead of you and he just kills the boss for you. I don't even think, is that controversial to say that at that point you're really not playing against the bosses at all? Uh, don't see why it should be. I don't, I don't see why anybody would disagree with that. It's just like, yeah, you're not really doing it at that point. You're just having someone else do it for you, which is the same problem. The only thing is, it's it's harder to access. Um, it's it's less likely to. While this game, like I think the the third focus uh, grace point you go to, they introduce ashes to you, and they're like, you should use these. These are important. They're a tool in your arsenal. And you're like, oh, okay. And I don't think you can summon for every boss in all the games, right? They have limits on that. Or maybe they don't, I can't quite remember. But you need to be as well. In Dark Souls 1 you have to be um, unhollowed. You have to be like a... I forget what the name is. You can't just summon, you need. You have to do some other stuff. Um, spirit summons are more reliable than other players. That's another thing. 
you once you unlock uh the mimic like you get that every time that's not some kind of like luck of the draw because there are some summons you can get like Tarkus, Tarkus who will annihilate the iron golem um but there are some you can get that just get beaten straight away by uh the bosses like i can't remember how well sif does against manas but uh uh, you also need the summoning item in a lot of the games. Yeah, I think all of them make you have to have particular items. Except mm -hmm. DS1 that only requires you're not hollow, but at the same time that's still resources that will run out. Um, and you need to use an ember in DS3, yeah. And if you use one, you are then susceptible to invasions, which... Oh my, do I love invasions. That's a, my favorite mechanic in all of the things. Tarkus oh, might wow, be... Really? It's, 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 it's so it is it's so good. Mm -hmm. Is it great when you're just trying to play a game and someone fucks around with you? Oh, yeah. That's my favorite thing. Is Yeah, that's, that sounds like a lot of fun when you're Especially, trying to play a game and someone's just... just yeah. And they come in with these weapons that they've got deliberately to like get the best instant kill on you and then they do a little like teabag or whatever and they're really proud of themselves and you're just like, thank you. That was great. I was, I was playing here, but... Okay, you you sure showed me by coming into the game I was playing. Mola has weird tastes. I mean, apparently it's pretty mainstream at this point. Elden Ring, you know, and I like it. I don't think that's that weird. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad they changed invasions to be opt-in only. Yeah, I thought, I was worried that we'd be getting the same shit in Elden Ring, but I realized that the only invasions I got were, uh, like, bot ones to simulate it, which was nice. But those ones in DS2 are still a fucking nightmare sometimes. Anyway. The guy who didn't explain his argument and said EFAP are bad. Um, I think that's how he's introducing himself. So his, his thing is, I said it several times throughout the discussion that there was not enough done to demonstrate the ashes were useful beyond decoys. The reason I never used them. So why... Okay, so you've already established how useful they are. Do you know how useful a decoy is in a Dark Souls boss? Very, very, very useful. Even I know that and I haven't played it. They are designed to, like, fight and destroy a single target. The second that they move to a different single target, you have them completely open. This is why the jellyfish is, like, incredibly useful, even though I think that's the first one you're directly given. Oh, I think the wolves are given you directly, and then jellyfish. Wolves and Jellyfish are both really good just because they can even for a moment make the boss uh, lose his sight on you. Um, but upgrade the Jellyfish, and it actually takes a while for any boss to kill the Jellyfish. And therefore, you have plenty of opportunities. First of all, healing is supposed to be like difficult. or well, not supposed to be. It is difficult with a lot of boss fights um, because they keep attacking you. And so you're like, when's my opportunity to heal? In the same way that when is my opportunity to attack? This is like a back and forth thing that you need to understand in the game. H. Palmer guy complained that he doesn't like getting hit when healing. And it's like, yeah, healing is a thing that benefits you and that you have to be, you have to earn the heal sort of thing. But if you have him distracted, it's like, yeah, I guess I'll heal. Now I guess I'll go attack. Like, it's much more chill. Um, and they f they're essentially free. They cost you a bit of FP for sure, but like, some of the uh, ashes are really cheap. Um... Okay, so then sleep pots are off limit then? I've never tried sleep pots. I didn't even know how good they were. Um, missable as in you can get it from a price from the maiden's husk. Yeah, the, 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 the maiden people sell them as well. And if you're missing the shop in the hub world, I don't know what to say at that point. Uh, so yeah, just to, to tell me that you didn't find them useful at all because they were mainly just decoys is really weird because that's an incredibly useful element. Um, I think Theo said that he opted out of using them at first because they cost FP when he wanted to spend it on his like weapon arts and stuff, but eventually he realized, as did Fortier, that they're way too powerful, and so it was just making the game pointless. Um, which, to be fair, I think it, as I said, it damaged my play through the game because of how much it ended up being too useful. There were some fights, I think, where it worked, but some fights were just like, oh, well, that's over. Uh, sleep pots stun pretty much everything and put fat godskin into pretty much perma-sleep. Holy shit. 
I didn't even know that. This is the thing uh, that's interesting to me about Elden Ring. The longer people play it, the more they'll find out all the ways to beat it, and I think it'll probably become, if the knowledge is public enough, one of the easiest out of a lot of the games. Wouldn't surprise me. I was happy to get them because I was getting wrecked with my mage in the beginning. Yeah. Have you done a playthrough without Ashes now, Mel? How's, uh, how's it been going? Yeah, uh, anyway. Um, the issue with delayed attacks, from what I can tell, is they look like regular attacks. The telegraphing for the attacks and the combo lengths are oof. That's how they're going to get you. Because uh, too many people are aware of how From Software stuff works. So they've got to keep changing it up. And I don't disagree with Theo's assessment, where they no longer come across as enemies anymore. They come across as mechanically designed to account for people who can roll and have iframes in this, in this world. Mm -hmm. uh, also, reminder, I love Theo, but he can be overly harsh and have silly opinions, like everyone can, but people are overly harsh on him. Give Theo love. I, th I think that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fine. Uh, my current kill boss is with items only, is without ashes as well. My tanky boy is completely without ashes, yep. Have you... Did you get through the whole game with him? Because I know you got uh, to at least like the Halig tree and stuff. I was curious how uh, Melania worked out. I think as well, Az, Az sent me a message saying he killed Melania on his new game plus. I assume he used ashes. I don't. I wouldn't blame him at all for that. Um, but it is. It and the fact that I'm asking that alone seems to be pretty important, right? Like if people were like, "Oh, you beat the game. Did you use ashes?" And if you were like, why would you ask me that? What difference does it make? And it's like, well, that's, that is the difference. People feel that um, it's that much help, that it's a different experience. And if someone wants to argue it's fine to have a different experience, I'd be like, okay, fine, but still, uh, did you do it without or with? Because one is much harder. I think Malekith was a really huge shock to me in relation to that. It was, a, it was night and day with a, with a mimic or not. Um, I got to Halig Tree, and then I got to the idea of trying to kill some bosses with the items the next day, so I have to finish it. Ah. Well, fair enough. Uh, today's animal of the day is the Luna Moth. The Luna Lunar Moth. moth. Let's have a little look, say. Let's take a look. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. That's very, that's an odd one. Um, it is a purpley green I can't moth. look, I'm too busy drawing Godzilla in pajamas. All right, I like will. Um... Let me see. Oh, look at him! It's neat. The Luna Moth. The Royal Revenants, the guys who keep using yellow, black portals and poison breath, are probably the biggest example of unpredictable attack patterns. Yeah, they have like seven hands or seven arms I guess um and they just go blah 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 ah, blah and right. you're gonna hate them when you eventually run into them uh for any they they do like Moth? yeah yeah a jump forward attack and it looks like they've stopped and then they do another one and then another one okay. and then another one oh, and you're just like right. are you fucking serious right now stop and it just they, they move like three meters at a time when they do it as well so oh great fun 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 yeah. I think Ashes of War are fair, considering how poorly designed some of the fights can be. What do you guys think about that? What, that if the fights are poorly designed, that, like, the Ashes are fine? <laughs> um, that's so, that's like compounding problems under problems. Yeah. <laughs> this one aspect is so poorly designed, I have to counteract it with a different aspect that seemed poorly designed. Well, it's just not the compliment that you wanted there, I think. Yeah, I mean, to solve the balancing issue, we made them absurdly damaging enemies that, or, or just poorly designed in the way of being able to beat them. It's like, oh no. Yeah. Just feels like, um, yeah, something's going wrong here, you know? Um, the Royal Remnants are the worst. You hate them. Um, yeah, I do hate them. There's a secret section in the Finger Folk Hero Dungeon where two grafted scions corner you on a bridge. Oh. 
Sounds like they do this stuff on papers. Royal Revenant is objectively the worst enemy I've ever fought in any From Software game ever. Oh, my. oh boy. Worse than the Bat of Chaos. Wait, what's the, the tree? Well, the tr with all the holes in the ground. That is the Bat of Chaos, but I imagine that when you look at your average mob versus bosses, it's like two yeah, different yeah, categories. Right. Bed of Chaos. <laughs> Such a funny name for something that is just known to be notoriously awful. Uh, don't think Invis Assassins were that bad. Assuming you find the torch, they can be killed pretty fast if you see them. So the whole problem is assuming specifically you find the, torch? the people that haven't found the torch. It is a nightmare, yeah. Uh, I don't think there's much excuse for them if you don't have the torch. Like, the gameplay you get from that is fucking ass. Um, there are other ways to reveal them, too. These assassins did kill a god. That does not... Why would... If you are, if you are grabbed invisibly, and then they take half of your health with that move, and then they're invisible after it ends, and you have no idea what's going on, to say, like, yeah, but narratively they're powerful. It's like, okay. All right. Awesome. <laughs> I don't know why I, I can tell. Yeah. I appreciate their consistency with their own lore. Um, I think arena size is a problem in this game. Some are way too big for bosses, others are way too small. Interesting thought. I haven't, uh, I haven't really thought about it. Uh, I'm glad the invisible men don't know how to climb ladders. Agreed. Radagon's Red Wolf was left in the debate hall to guard Renala because even though Radagon cucked her, he still wanted to protect her. Okay. I think uh, there was a question of why was there a big red wolf inside the debate hall, so there you go. It wouldn't surprise me if there were lore reasons for all of the things that happened in the game. It's just that acquiring those reasons requires many a visit can, to the wiki. I can with lore reasons for anything. Yeah. In a certain dungeon, I had skeletons poke through and shoot through a fog gate. Incredibly frustrating. Why can't they just see me? Why can't they even see me through it? I had that with uh, Godskin Apostle a couple of times. I was hit in the back uh, when I was after having walked through the fog wall. You'd think the fog wall would make you immune to anything behind it, but not quite. Uh, shield, shield easily counters. Sorry, shield counters easily annihilate all birds. Alright. Just like real life. Yeah. Uh, just beat the godskin duo first try. Hype. Nice. It's a tough one. This game feels like DS2 in the way that it wants you to multi-class, but unlike DS2, it's way harder to do. I mean, there's just, there's just connections in this game to all of the past ones, and they've just, you know, they've gone slightly different directions and with different things. Um, accidental heal even when you're at full health, sad face. It happens, and it's very sad when it do. Neo 2 has a great stat menu and menu HUD. FromSoft likes dicking people around with their item descriptions, and it's pretty annoying sometimes. Uh, In what way? <laughs> There's a lot of ways they dick around with you. This is something I think that would put you off the game entirely, but you can pick up something called, like, the Dragon Drake Talisman, and you're like, ooh, what does that do? And it's like, it will increase your resistance to fire attacks. Oh, by how much? Tell me, please. I'd um, love to know. If you want more information, you need to look at all of your stats, and then you need to apply the thing, and then look at all your stats again and see how they've changed. Mm, that's like almost even worse because it's like, uh, you just wasted my time. Um, and me. some of them, but you can't even do it that way because some will be like, it'll improve jumping attacks. And so you have to put it on, do a jumping attack, take it off, do a jumping attack, and compare the stats. I fucking hate that. Making me do my own research in these games sometimes like that is just, just tell me how much. Tell me how much. Like, why won't you just tell me how much? Why do, why do so many game devs think that I'm just, like, afraid of numbers? Like, I'm some stupid, dumb idiot who doesn't understand what numbers are. I need to know what these numbers are. And I'm pretty sure in uh, DS2 is the worst one, where it has, if you upgrade ADP, it'll increase evasion. It's like, the hell does that mean? Turns out, it means it'll extend your iframes. It's like, how was I supposed to figure that out exactly? And 
Uh, thank goodness that you uh, you have the internet, I suppose. Thank God, yeah. It annoy the fuck out of me. Um, the stats are right next to you, though. You don't even need to change the menu. More you're making added a defense buff sound worse than it is. Other non-specific descriptions are true, though. The fact that, well, it wouldn't matter, right? Like, the fact that there are many that you actually have to go out and test yourself in order to see what it actually did is still unacceptable. Um, then again, maybe some literally, people... it's not, like, development time or anything. It's just, it is a decision that someone made to just be like, we're not going to tell you what this thing does in the game. And I, can't, I, I don't know that, being like, your current fire defense is 15. If you put on this thing, it'll add it to 20. Like, I don't actually know how good that is until I see it tested. Yeah, what does that mean? Yeah. Like, what does is, what is, what is two armor mean? Does that mean it decreases damage taken by two or two percent? Or things like, yeah, I don't know what that means. You're going to have to tell me what these numbers mean. Not just what they are, but what they mean. That goes the same for armor. A lot of people have been saying, like, I switch up to the what is like I used to have twenty armor on everything, and now I have sixty. But I really didn't feel anything different. It's like, yeah, yeah. The human brain doesn't necessarily know how to take this info and use it. Two armor means it's not zero armor. That's true. That's, that's probably true at least. Yeah, you especially in games when you could feel like you're doing way better than you actually are doing. So you can deceive yourself into thinking something's balanced or not. It's it's why I hate, why I generally hate when like stealth uh, updates that will rebalance like items or equipment and things, and the devs don't say it in the patch notes. Said that it's just a secret stealth balance. Well, and like uh, someone said, you're only going to feel the differences in the extremes. So it's not true. If you if you upgrade your health by ten. And you see your health bar increase by that little little bit. You're like, yeah, I can see that, and that's it, what it just did. It depends, yeah. The subtle things can't because because we'll talk about like thresholds, right? If you do fifty damage with your sword and enemies have a hundred health, you will notice when the enemies start having a hundred one health. Because that is a huge threshold. Just yeah. a single point that changes all your hits from a two hit to a three hit. And you will absolutely notice that. So these are the things that I want to know in games. It's important. I, it's part of the experience. I hate being frustrated because I don't know what I'm doing. You give me the decisions. Like as a player, you're giving me all of these items and you're trusting me with being able to equip characters with this stuff. But at the same time, you're not telling me what the things actually are. I'm just working off of... Um, I'm just working off of uh, mysterious general information, and I'm trusting that it really does what it says it does a lot of the times. Putting definitive <laughs> stat numbers might be considered immersion breaking. Why? No, it's not. I, I promise you, you it's not. With all the numbers we have currently, why would adding those ones be immersion breaking? I don't understand. This is, um, and yeah, uh, to be fair, they've they've been trolling like this in like all of their games. They'll have stuff that's very clear to understand what it does, and then they'll have stuff that's just super fucking vague, and you have to Google it, which is annoying. Um, we even have items that are unclear on exactly what it is you're supposed to be checking. You're like, I don't know what this even refers to, that sort of thing. But um, yeah, have access to the wiki, I suppose. Uh. In the last tab of your inventory, there is a codex of tutorial stuff, but I wish there was more stuff that was explained more. I thought those were just uh, stored tooltips. I didn't realize they were like big explanations of things or whatever. But, um, you know, that's something, I guess. I found Mola through his DS2 video, and here we are talking about Elden Ring. This is truly the Armored Core. Hey. <laughs> no one talks nice about meme. that game. No, nobody does. I love that Stormvale, the first area you gain access to, punishes you with the NPC that's stealing 20% of your souls when you die in that area, and you only get them back by killing him. Oof. It's such a, it's such a From Software thing to do, that is. It's, uh, there's, there's so many examples of that across the whole series of just things where you're like, why did you do that? Just to, just to be mean? Is that it? Everyone always talks about FromSoft games while completely forgetting Armored Core was a thing. 
that and Ninja Blade, their actual best game. I mean, yeah, normally people think of From Software as the Souls Born experience as a total now. Uh, in 2013, when the PS4 launched, they were talking about 1080p 60fps in all their marketing talk. No game ever did yeah. that on a base PS4. Uh, none of their first party games, I believe. Wait, no, oh, wait, oh, that, huh? You did any thoughts first there. party? Well, yeah, because I was about to say Ratchet and Clank. It's like, no, wait, Ratchet and Clank 2016 was the first Ratchet and Clank game that didn't go for 60. <laughs> um, first party, I remember that uh, Killzone Shadowfall that was really choppy. Infamous Second Son was 30. Uh, Uncharted was 60 multiplayer, but 30. Uh, oh man, the Order 1886. Whoa, flashbacks to that game. That game is, uh, 30. It's not even 1080, it's, it's 1920 by 800 because that's more cinematic. Yay. Um, I'm just, until Dawn, nope. Uh, Bloodborne, definitely not. Uh, no. Spider-Man, nope. God of War, nope. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, no. Uh, pretty sure the last, man, whoo. Cool. Hey, God of War Three remastered. Hey, at least Yay. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure that that's actually. I never even realized that. That not. I don't know that a single first party Sony game, like a single major first party Sony game, targeted sixty, except for Uncharted and multiplayer. Wow. Oh, I guess Gran Turismo probably did, and that's it. Huh. Yeah, there you go. I remember when that conversation was happening. I don't care about the resolution so much, but um Gran Autismo. I remember it was that was the big debate, right? Battlefield 4 was 900p on PlayStation and 720 on Xbox. And everybody's getting into the arguments about that. Those were the days. Those were the days. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Man, I remember back when I played Battlefield 3 on the Xbox 360. Yeah, I remember on PS3. That shit was 16v16. 16 16. No, it was, uh, I think it was 12v12. 12 12. It was, uh, 24 think? players. Yeah, I was think it was 12v12. 12 12. Let me I double check. So. Let me double I, check. I remember when I, when I finally got my PC and then booted up Battlefield 3, it was a whole new world. It blew my mind. Just a whole new world. Oh, shit, up. you're right. 24. 12v12? Yeah. 12 yeah, 12? yeah. God it, damn. Uh, I remember when I played that on PC for the first time, it was like, oh my god, there's this whole world. <laughs> Battlefield yeah. 3 was the first. It was basically among the first. That and Skyrim, I think. I were played the two... um, Crisis 2. That was mine as well. For what? On, like on PC when I got it for my... Those were the first two games that I got for my like super duper yeah, PC. Yeah, yeah. The I, first when one I, first... I got. Yeah, when I got my first PC, it was, it was Battlefield 3 and Skyrim were the two that I had extensive experience with on console and then played them on PC. And I was like, yep, PC. We're just, yeah, it's, not even a con it's not even a fucking contest. What it, have I been is, doing? It was it was a very transformative day when I it was. started playing Battlefield. It was like, 64 players. <laughs> And, and Six, like I, oh, just everything's crisp, so clear. Crisp visuals, every, yeah. yeah, and everything so blurry. smooth. I can aim. I can, I can aim so well. <laughs> it was like it was. Yeah, crazy. like everyone's everyone's way better, and I had to just learn. But I got over that quick. And I just like that the was server browsers and things, and like I can pick the that games. That was the battle log the maps. Yeah. yeah, you had to go to battle log and log. use the browser. That. <laughs> the uh, browser based but, battle log. I know when I, the the very few times I went back to the Xbox and played Battlefield Three, I was like, "Man, everyone sucks! <laughs> like everyone's shit on Xbox. Like I'm like if I was, there's no way I should be able to do this because I was used to both at that time, mm -hmm. and because PC just teaches you to be better because everyone's generally better. Uh, so you sort of know, okay, I can't get away with all of the stupid ass shit that I can get away with on an, on an Xbox because everyone's a loser and you go back and you're like, damn, I am a God amongst mortals. <laughs> I wouldn't go that. F I, I remember it was just, it was, it was, it was a good time. Aim, like between the snap aiming and the aim assist 
And we we noticed that in Ape, this is Apex's biggest problem is that that like aim assist is very real for console players or people who play on controller. Mm -hmm. uh, it is pretty darn substantial. So like I'm really good at that. I play with people who are really good. And we notice controller players will just full send straight into your face so that they can get that aim assist advantage up close uh, because you're so much more effective when the game's fucking playing for you. And it is it's staggering. But that's that's one of the that's one of the biggest weaknesses of Apex Legends is uh, that there is a there is definitely aim assist that you get on a controller or on a console. I uh, I saw someone asking like about who made Order 1886. That was uh, Ready at Dawn who made uh, they made a really cool game called Daxter for PSP. I'm not sure if any of you guys played that. It was like a little spin-off of Jack and Daxter. It follows the one year that he spent in Haven City. Uh, no, it was uh, two years he spent in Haven City, uh, separated from Jack. And you go down into the sewers and you hunt bugs. That was a really cool game. Uh, hmm. They also made the uh, they also made the God of War PSP games, I believe, and then they made the order. Um, and yeah, <laughs> that didn't turn out so very good. Uh, art style greater than graphics any day. Sometimes for people it's hard to tell the difference, but it makes all the difference. I agree. Art styles don't age uh, in the same way that that, that our graphics do. Yeah, it's like it's like graphics versus how you use the graphics. Uh, yeah, essentially how are you? Because graphics, I guess you could say, is like the technology, um, and the art style is the implementation in a sense. In a sense. In a sense. I'm not sure that's totally accurate. Uh, finally beat fucking Melania while listening. All luck. Spammed swarm of flies and black flames. Spent two days on this pain. Yeah, she, she can take a long time for a lot of people. And as we discussed, is it fair? Is it super unbalanced? I think many people have many opinions on that. Uh, Radan is so perfectly designed that DSB beat him first try. Also, he's been looking up guides to cheese the game and still has over 300 deaths. Hi, Fringy. Hey. Uh, good, old, I think, uh, good old DSP. I, I'm probably going to have more deaths than he will, I imagine, by the time I'm done. Um... I was being sarcastic, by the way. Also funny how Rags left before you got to the topic of worst enemies slash arenas. Did we? I thought we covered quite a bit of, uh... I think you talked about worst bosses. Yeah, we definitely did that. Yeah, I, I think so. Worst? I don't even remember us having a topic of, like, worst arenas. I had to leave for two hours or so, then I came back. And shockingly, we were still streaming. Could you believe it? Shocking. I couldn't believe it. Uh, I loved getting Elden Ring. It's something I wanted for a few years, but I don't need another. They should take a break from open worlds. I, I don't know. Yeah, do whatever you want, really. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not too bothered by the idea of them uh, making um, making another one like this. In fact, I probably would assume they will. Um, but you know, neat experiment and stuff. I was also mad that it's not Dark Souls One, to be honest. Well, only in the aspects that I think Dark Souls 1 is better. It's better than Dark Souls 1 in a lot of aspects. Because of uh, just stuff they would have learned. But unfortunately, I don't know what it is, but I feel like the healing system in Dark Souls 1 nailed it, and no other game seems to agree. They all try their own thing. And uh, we'll get there eventually, maybe, I don't know. Elden Ring is the most innovative game in decades. Elden Ring could benefit from more narrative, lock off sections, and require story missions. Any sort of narrative connection to the characters. Fucking hell. So, you're saying that it's innovative in mechanics, I'm assuming. Not story, from what you just said. And at the same time, I'm not trying to be mean to the game, but I really wouldn't describe it as innovative. Um, it didn't seem that way based on what I saw. I think it's which is what we've fine. had before, but expanded into an open world, which is, I think they've done a decent job. I just don't know that we've seen anything here that's new. It's a lot of the times when a game's really good, 
I don't want to hear for the sequel. We're trying to innovate. It's like, eh, maybe just like really refine the awesome thing you did before. Yeah, and they've, I think that's what we've got here, which, again, more than ready to compliment it on those, on those things. I just don't know what... Like, like what's, what was the last game you guys played that you felt this has changed, the, this has changed game design to some degree? Uh, and it, recently? Because a lot of the examples Most I've recent. from a while ago. We uh, talked recently. about um, Assassin's Creed earlier. Uh, most recently? Hmm. I would assume recently being like at least in the last 10 years, if not sooner. Uh, in which case... Hmm. Like a game and its sequel, the sequel to a game that innovates in a way that it just oh, kind of Or even just a game, game that's innovative in and of itself, I suppose. Maybe chat's got some suggestions. Which are three? I'm trying to, mm. Yeah, I'm trying to think about... Last of Us 2 for the wrong reasons? I don't even know what you <laughs> reference exactly. Innovative storytelling. Pre Innovative uh, storytelling, yeah. Um, um, RE4? Uh, yeah, Resident Evil 4 is definitely up there. I, oh, I, I mean, if we're going that recent, then Grand Theft Auto 3. Um, As in, like, but I thought in the last, like, Minecraft is a great example, honestly. Yeah, yeah Minecraft's a good yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, Portal, yes, I would agree. Portal? Uh, yeah, Gears of War 1 probably ought to count, I think. Um, because this is there tough. There are a lot Specifically of games, games that tried to do what Gears of War did. I suppose that's how we would measure it, right? How many copycats there were, and thus Dark Souls would count. Maybe, maybe. Dark Souls would definitely count. Um, maybe, which is funny, I guess, more so than Demon Souls, even though Demon Souls kind of... It started the, it, uh, but it didn't have the influence of Dark Souls, It didn't Souls, make the mainstream yeah. thing, yeah. Battlefield 4? No, 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 no. It wouldn't be Battlefield 4, because 4 was just a refinement of 3. And th I guess the thing is, is Destructible Environments was bad company. Yeah. But maybe it, maybe um, it would be what Red Faction was the Red Faction on uh, I think? Oh, yeah, Red Faction did have the... I, I guess I was talking about Battlefield, specifically. And I do want to make clear as well, we aren't talking necessarily about the first one to do it as the one that had the influence to push it forward yeah, as something that everyone else liked to pick up. Call of Duty 4? Call of Duty 4, I think, absolutely. yeah, I think that's yeah. fair. Um, I think, people keep, why are you saying The Last of Us 2? What's, what's everyone referencing with The Last of Us 2, exactly? Well, yeah, I, would be I don't curious. know what's innovative about it. I would, I would even give the title to Last of Us 1 before 2, in that it has an effect I of story-driven games, in a sense. Well, nobody really talks about 2 anymore, do they? Like, 2 Thanks, has fuck. died in the discourse. <laughs> Superior Far golfing mechanics. <laughs> um, hmm. Uh, Breath of the Wild is probably going to be influential long term. There's probably a reason why, even 12 years after it was made, StarCraft II is still the most like popular RTS that exists. Hmm. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was I was playing it just a moment ago while we were chatting, and it's just man, that shit holds up. That shit is aged like a fine wine. And I guess they're gonna make a third one, right? Well, it was twelve. So it's been twelve years after StarCraft One. They made StarCraft Two. It right, has been twelve like years since StarCraft Two. Who hmm. the fuck knows? So an interesting one here. Overwatch was for a time, but it feels like the hero shooter thing is already kind of. Um. Oh, know. PUBG. PUBG. Yeah. That yeah. PUBG spawned a shitload of the Battle yeah. Royale-style games. Yes. Probably Both the successful and the unsuccessful. Yeah. Also, Apex, I think, really breathed a lot of fresh air into the, the well, sure, thing. I wouldn't count these as, but, like, I, I'm thinking more so the, the one that kicked it off, and it's like... Yeah, well, it was game. PUBG, I think. PUBG, yeah. That still gets a lot of players. You still just does, never hear yeah. about it, but, you know. What about Dota and LoL and... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 those definitely count. Ah, CSGO, I guess, is influential, but I don't know if it's innovative. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know about CSGO. A lot of people play it. It's super duper popular. I guess it was innovative in terms of uh, the models that it has for monetization. <laughs> um, well, I, I wonder if maybe we're going a little off what innovative should count as. Maybe, because if, you know, if something was truly incredible in terms of its design, but nobody cared about it, does it not get right. to be counted as innovative at that point? 
Uh, no, I think it probably should count as innovative even then. Which means um, at that well, point, even if something was particularly influential, right. does that guarantee Evolution. it was innovative? Well, maybe that's the difference. Innovative versus... Because Grand Theft Auto 3 was revolutionary um, in terms of what it brought as a change to uh, the video game landscape. Can a, a few people have already brought it up. But I also say Z spawned mm, a yeah, huge I'm at to this day it continues to be this sort of open world survival kind of games. Yeah, um, but point. yeah. I, I I don't know I don't know who did it before they sort of really kind of did that concept. And when that game released it was shit. But um but it certainly was very popular in a sense and it still continues to be pretty popular. Um I will I will say Arma I don't think there's any game like Arma. Uh, Probably not. No, not um, that I. What about Timefall Two? Um. Well, what would be? I mean, um, I think that game was much. Titanfall was more innovative than Titanfall Two was very much an iterative sequel. Titanfall. I think oh, so, Titanfall was yeah, a good yeah. one because Titanfall was the enhanced mobility, which became like a trend for a while there. Yeah. Um, nobody, nobody did it quite like they did. That's a good one, actually. Yeah. There was a, someone mentioned Doom 2016 wasn't really innovative. And I'm like, to a degree, I think it almost was like the reverse. People just liked how it didn't, it wasn't innovative. It was just, yeah. remember that old stuff? We're going to do it really well. It's been a while since we've yeah. done this. Here it is. And you're like, hey. Which, by yeah, the way, we're just applies to storytelling, too. Like, hey, remember when stories used to be straightforward? It's like, do you want some of that? And you're like, yeah, do it. Mm-hmm. Raggers, we all know you only play games where you can kill people. Um, so a lot of the game play, games that I choose do revolve around dispensing death. Yes. Um, <laughs> but what about I'm games sure that you hurt people, some... like Mario Kart? Does that count? <laughs> you don't kill them, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. <coughs> yeah, I guess you're right. No, you Pretty much all my games th that I play do involve killing people. That's or a funny thought, isn't it? I am now yeah. thinking, like, what games do I play and like that I don't kill people in? It's like, because uh. like, well, Starcraft, yeah, you kill lots of people in that, and aliens, and Daisy, yeah, Vermintide, yeah, Battlefield, yeah, Apex. Oh, Portal. Yeah. I do play a lot of Portal. Yeah, no, you don't have to kill anyone in that. And yeah, unless you count the, the turrets as people. <laughs> I don't know. Turrets aren't people. Well, in that game, they seem to have personalities, you know? They do seem to have Local. personalities. Yeah, I guess when you something as broad as killing things, you don't even notice it, because Deep Rock Galactic, you kill a lot of bugs in that, but it's absolutely nothing compared to... It's so much more different than Helldivers, another co-op game where you kill bugs. And they, they're just they're so distinct and different. Mm-hmm. You don't um, even think to... Oh, Timberborn, you don't kill... You don't purposefully kill things was, in that. I was about to say, Jurassic World <laughs> Evolution, like, it's a, it's a fuck-up if you let the dinosaurs eat your uh, guests, but I mean, that does happen, so I don't know if, yeah. And, you know, there's no way you're playing Timberborn without one of your beavers dying at some point. Oh, no. Yeah, they die of old age, yeah. eventually. Aww. Um, But... Right. Beavers live, do live and die. They they are born, they reach childhood, they're in childhood, and then they grow up and become beavers that actually add to society in some meaningful way. And then eventually they will die. I feel like uh, that you, the way that you say that, you know, just seems to belie some sort of uh, underlying perspective. Uh, you are the beaver god, and you <laughs> sit on your your beaver throne. throne beaver throne of course and what what, are, what else would you sit on other than a beaver front throne <laughs> um, i'm thinking of now is, i'm thinking yeah. of the otters from south park in the atheist episode now and how they ate they talked about eating food off their tummies science damn you time child <laughs> um that comment about the innovation they, they ended with saying, and they also felt disconnected to the main character. What do I mean, man? I, uh, what, an Elden Ring? These are these are subjects we didn't even bring up because they're just there's just nothing to say about a lot of them for us. Uh, mm -hmm. If someone had said, "Did you feel connected to your main character?" I'd have been like kind of baffled. What do you mean? 
I feel connected to my level and my runes. Yeah, um, and that's not a commentary on like how that's an impossibility in this scenario. It's just like, yeah, they just didn't do anything for that, so why would I care? I mean, when you talk about games like um, DayZ is a good example. Your character is that you're like because it's it's a game, so it's not an actual life. Your your value is measured by the stuff you have, you know. Like you find something really good, or you manage like you manage to kill a player and take all of their amazing stuff, and now you're just like, oh shit, I am an incredibly valuable character now. I have all this stuff, and it's almost paralyzing at times how much you know that really good find can make you really value your character's life because they have all this stuff. Um, I don't know if I prefer mana or how Dark Souls 1 did magic, but overall I've never wanted to beat a game with literally every different type of character. I did Strength, then Dax Arcane after update, now I want to do Intelligence and Mage build, uh, but need more connection to NPCs and main person. Yeah, I don't, I don't really disagree with any of that, yeah. I feel similar. I agree with Theo on everything, but I loved ER. Being Elden Ring, and that's the thing. I think the only difference between all of us on the cast and Theo is that Theo would almost go as far as saying he hated the game, uh, but myself, oh. Otia, Metal, and others, we all say we adore it. Um, so you know, but we also share the criticisms. That's just a matter of what these things do for you personally. You know, mm -hmm. how far they go. That text box to Res Torrent after he dies has killed me several times in the middle of a boss. I would rather just feed the fucker. I hate it. I think everyone hates the fact that this game that is known for not hand-holding you makes you confirm if you want to get the thing that will oftentimes save your life. Like, are you sure you want this? Like, yes, 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 yes. And the fact yes, that... Yes, I'm sure I didn't accidentally pull this shit out of the menu and then equip it and then press the use button, I promise. And even if I did, error on my favor. Exactly. Uh, there are other things in the game where I fuck myself over by reapplying. Reapplying a grease to your, uh, to your weapon when you don't need to. Holy shit, I've done that several times. That is a way more important resource than spending one Estus to resurrect your vehicle, essentially. I don't understand why... They feel the need to make you confirm that, but they're also chill about, uh, you know, other, other the other options not having the confirmation. I don't know. Hmm. Grease, yeah, I know. Another point to make about Torrent is that Melina seems to speak to him at the start as if he's sentient and can make his own choices. So saying it's supposed to be awkward controls is bollocks. That's what people told me. It's supposed to be awkward controls. Dude, that's what people told me about Last Guardian, which, by the way, I think is actually... From the devs directly like they they created the creature to behave like an animal would in real life where it doesn't always react or respond to you in any way you want which is like oh I mean, you know what's you know what sucks about animals in real life is they don't respond they, to you they and react don't to always you. listen to you yeah that's uh pretty not awesome fuck me i, I remember know, i streamed that game back in when it came out and it was a nightmare uh so many times the game i would just be staring and you know the worst part if you have like your, uh, your pet will be able to, you know, break down a wall. All you need to do is drop a piece of food near the wall and, and it'll understand what you want. You're like, oh, okay, cool. You do that and it just looks at the food, looks at the wall, looks at the food, looks at you, looks at the wall, and then it walks off. And you're like, oh, maybe this isn't a destructible <laughs> wall. Maybe I fucked up. And the game is like, no, 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 no. It's just that sometimes it won't listen to you. <laughs> that's an interesting Oh, that sounds choice. fun. It's not Let's put fun. that in our game. <laughs> it's not fun at just all. That's what I needed in my game. This is what keeps me coming back for more. Uh, remember Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin, and credits? Uh, no, honestly. Which is for the best. I memory hold a lot of that game. Blimbus, Blimbus. Metal is a Limbus. Rags, nuts for Crimbus. Um, alright. I'm drunk. I am nuts for Crimbus. My brain is in Drimbus. This game slaps, by the way. All right, there you go. It is true. I've heard it slaps. There are missed opportunities in level design. Crouch is never used for something like shortcuts. True, I was surprised about that. They never actually um, you can created... crouch. Yeah, you can crouch in the game. And, and funnily enough, there is Why? You, there's stealth. There is a very limited amount of stealth in this game, where oh, if you crouch while okay. approaching someone, they won't hear you compared to walking toward them. Um, oh. 
Does that come up often, or is it, it just like... It can come up often, it just depends how much you want to use it. Sometimes you just rather run up to the enemy and stab them instead of slowly crouch toward them to get a backstab sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Alright. Um, but yeah, I, I was thinking the same thing. There are a couple of holes in walls where I was like, ooh, is that a crouch wall? And it's like, no, it's just an invisible wall. And you're like, oh, okay. Um, so, you know, calling it a stealth mechanic, yeah, I know, I know. But you know what I mean. What, <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, and it should have been in the starting area too. Yeah, it would have been cool to have implemented it more, I guess. Uh, with Stormveil, there's a path on the right side, outside, that lets you go to the church behind it. I don't know if you can get to Godric that way, though. I'm not sure if you can either, but, uh, yes, you are correct. Theo is too based. It's almost dangerous. True. Gotta take Theo in small amounts, or otherwise you'll blow up the whole, the whole world that it takes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was prepared to hate Theo, but he's correct. <laughs> That's all it says. <laughs> it reminds me of that meme, right? Like, the, they hated him because he told the truth thing. <laughs> um, at Rags, love you, no hate, but brutally insult me, you... And they've got B-I-K underscore H. Oh, okay. B-I-K underscore H? Bitch. You bitch. I don't know, but they want you to insult them. You bitch. <laughs> what, wait, what? I ins insult them? All right. Um, hmm. The people who you look up to are probably very disappointed in you, and they would be ashamed if you ever met. Oh. Oh my god. Wait, I want to insult him. I look, he asked for it, literally. He literally asked for it. He did ask for it. Not um, figuratively, literally. Uh, give me a moment. I get a use the loo. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. I want other studies to try Souls-like games with their own twist. Oh, studios. They probably okay. Uh, like Deck Thirteen with Surge Two, Ignore Surge One, and Lords of the Fallen. I've heard Surge Two is better than One. Lords of the Fallen was fucking crap, though. Um, <laughs> oh, was it? Yeah, it was really bad. Uh, it was it was oh, no. one of the original like attempts at being Dark Souls when made by people who aren't. I remember. The the game at the time, I just, yeah, I don't remember much about the conversation surrounding it, though. No. Was that insult him? Don't kill him. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, <laughs> it's got a bad reputation, I'm pretty sure. Um, but ah. I suppose, yes, I would be, I would like to see other people try it, sure. The Demon Souls remake aesthetic is by far my least favorite. It looks so cartoony, and I hate the animations. I, I intend to play it when I get a PS5 in 2030. And, uh, uh, that game hmm. looks crisp, which might be the problem. Hmm. It's um, very, very crisp. Uh, had nothing to say, but here's some money. Love the conversation, and it's nice to get a good game amongst the slob of the lot of the industry as it is. Rani is best girl, also high rags. Rags would say hi. He's currently uh, fluming, but yes. Um, I mean, I thought it was a really good conversation too. I hope people don't take it too much mm -hmm. as that we hate the game when we definitely don't. Um, we just yeah. got we're, we're hyper into them, okay, guys. We got very specific criticisms and lots of them. I've been waiting for almost four years, Theo. I want my DS5 video so I can have a reason to buy it. He'll get around to it eventually, apparently. He's busy with his uh, his IRL stuff, but he'll get there. And uh, that is all of the Elden Ring stream ones. Yay! Excellent. So what will be the next one to catch up on then? Uh, I think we'll do today's ones, and then when I finish them, depending on where we are, we will either continue or not, I'm not sure. Okie dokie. Uh, yeah, cool. The cool thing about Final Fantasy VII's remake is that it's a remake, but technically a sequel at the same time, as the original PS1 game is canon to it, but malevolent time travel shenanigans force the characters to unwittingly relive past events with only very mild cases of deja vu. The main villain is trying to change events. Interesting. I, I, fair enough. There I don't, you go. Yeah, I don't know. That reminds me of... um. Mortal Kombat 9, where they were like, they reset everything, but then sort of similar events happen, and... Yeah, yeah. Man, Mortal it's Kombat like continuity that. is excellent, isn't it? It's, well, now, with uh, Mortal Kombat 11, it's just, it's, you know, we're, we're in such a great place where... They fight the God of Time, or whatever? 
Yeah, and then they reset <laughs> the timeline or something. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I that's know. just something you should avoid. It's like, right rule number one, don't have your characters battle the god of time. Avoid that. No, just tends to cause problems, you know. Yeah. Reasons which I would hope are pretty obvious, but... Uh, today is Wednesday, March 23rd, 2022. Hey, we're on the exact day for that one. Well, it's 24th, but yeah. I don't know, we got two out of the three hosts are still in the 23rd. You've been outvoted. Ah, uh, alright. Oh, was there a vote here? Yep. Rags totally okay. did a vote, even though he's muted. Uh, I feel like you're not telling me the truth. The truth is just a poor man's lie. Oh, <laughs> where's that <laughs> from? <laughs> Whose quote was that? Confucius, I don't fucking know. Uh, oh yeah, Confucius. <laughs> Maybe Lao Tzu or something. I I'm sure somebody heard me say that and then thought about something for a little bit and was like, wow, that's really interesting if you think about blah 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 blah. And I'm just sitting here like, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, hello all, the only place thumbnail of the day is cool dino games video. Hold on, I'm at, uh, just give me a second. Cool dino games. Oh boy, better be cool. Cool Dino Games only plays Cool Dino. Oh my god, it's a good thumbnail. Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> oh, really great. <laughs> oh, well. It actually took me a while to decipher that one. It's like, yeah, same. at first I thought it was a tangled web of stuff, and it's like, oh, wait, no, we got the T-Rex, and then Odie is the um, Brontosaurus, and then... Zack <laughs> is the pterodactyl. The pterodactyl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everyone's asked me to show it. None of you people are capable of finding this stuff on your own, so now I gotta take the yeah. screenshot... I just want to participate in the lols. And then, do this, do th I mean, Rags will be able to see when he comes back now, at least, so there's that, too. Mm -hmm. Alright, here she is. Pretty good thumbnail, right? Pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that the T-Rex has a stubble uh, behind yeah. the board. It's the oh faces. Oh, the it's terrifying thing. It's perfect. Oh, <laughs> Maybe think of something that so many YouTubers completely neglect is their thumbnails. Oh yeah. And some create ones that are just cursed and deep fried, and you're just like, why? Mm. Yeah. Like by accident, not with any kind of awareness. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm still no good at doing thumbnails. I don't think I understand how to convey what I want to convey quickly and easily. Yeah. Um, Because if I... Because yours are, yeah, the the Cosmoronic ones, just to, let me click on it just so I remember exactly. Hmm. Well, because I redid those now with a little pixel art one. I'm yeah, happy with that one. That's what I'm like thinking of. One. I'm just, yeah, I'm just looking at it. Yeah, I mean, it's... I, I like, like that one, my, but... The change that yeah. I would make to it is to have it be more of a template that you could put something topical on. It's probably, that is probably the modifier. I mean, it's basically right. It should be like the EFAP one where you got the little spit on the right where it's like, the yeah, so that they don't just all blend together. Because uh, I, it's really great. So it's just that it's, it's all the same except for the number. And so looking at the thumbnail itself, you can't remember like which one's which. Exactly. Well, because the number is small. Um, that's actually a good suggestion. I will keep that in mind. In terms of like main videos, I think it's 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 hard. It's like hmm, what because uh... if you kept the cosmoronic and space stuff, and then changed you, like so if like if you were direction maybe maybe if you were looking at like a floating TV in space, and the TV That's screen is what you had be something relevant to the episode. That's a thought. Maybe even you had like a just yeah something something like that. You know? Huh. Hmm. That is a thought. You know, but some people just they do have those deep fat fried, ugly, awful. Who is that chick we covered on EFAP? Uh, the what's her name? Which one? The 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 Suicide Squad. Oh, 
Grace Randolph. Her, yeah, her. Oh, those her, thumbnails are really over. There's so much stuff just. Well, everything about her presentation, on it? Because even in the actual video, she just stuffs stuff on yeah, screen. The actual videos, and it was just stuff, words, thing. Everything was just splashed, looshed out, and it none of it matched anything. And it was just a mess. It was awful. Because yeah, you can compare her to Shad, right? Shad has a setup so that he has a little frame, and then everything appears in the frame relevant to what he's talking about. That's like the yeah, normal yeah, yeah. way to do it. But with her, she just kept throwing shit on screen, it overlap each other and stuff. It's like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Hello, my favorite podcast, the best podcast, at least objectively. The Final Fantasy That's music true. of the day is Rebel Army from Final Fantasy Two. Rebel Army Final Fantasy 2. Let me see. Because I played this way back in the day, and I don't remember any. I, re I don't remember a lot of the music from 2. I remember music from 1, I think. Like, once I hear it, I'll be like, oh, yeah, of course, it's burned into my brain. Um, and a lot of Final Fantasy IV music I remember a lot, because even on Game Boy, that came with a player where you could play all of the music from the game. Uh, so it was, it was really, it was, it was nice to have that. So I'm like, oh, I don't listen to Sid's theme. Oh, that's nice, and I like that. Da, 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 da. Crystal Chronicles had good music. Final Fantasy, a lot of Final Fantasies have great music. Uh, what do Brendan Gleeson, Sean Bean, and the kid that Jace murdered in Arcane have in common? Should be easy and go. They're dead? Well... I don't- I don't see- cause like saying that- well, cause Sean Bean's the only one out of the three that dies a lot, right? That's his meme. He dies a lot, the kid in Arcane died, and who's the third? Grace Randolph? Brendan Gleeson. Oh, Brendan- Brendan Gleeson. I'll have to remember that face. Uh, hmm. They all... Someone said beheaded. The kid wasn't beheaded. Yeah. Hole in the chest? Uh... Shot by a projectile? Is that it? Oh, did they fall? Well, you got... Because remember, the kid fell, Brendan Gleeson fell from the tower. Wait, which tower? So, in, um... In Bruges? Oh, yeah, so you got that, that... Sean Bean, has he fallen from a big tower? Surely he's oh, fallen Oh, Goldeneye, from when he falls... When yeah, oh, yeah, yeah they all right. fell to their deaths. Yeah, there we go, we all did right, it! We got it! Yay, Yay, we did it! Unless they're all, unless you mean like white male. It would just be funny That's if he boring. was like, that wasn't at all what I was going for. It was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's another. <laughs> but I think that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. They all have a falling We solved death. the riddle. Woohoo. Yeah. Uh, hey, love you guys. Fringy, great TFA video. Rags, really enjoying your Cosmoronic podcast. Mola, tell all these Thank massives you. to play Deep Rock. It's good. Yeah, guys, you should play Deep Rock Galactic. Deep Rock Galactic is a really good game, and yeah, all of you should play it and support those devs. Do it. Do it. Do it now. Uh, I started playing Elden Ring because of Mola. I enjoyed his streams, so I bought my first Soulsborne game, and I love it. Also, hi Rags. Hi Mola. Hi Birdman. Hello. Hi Birdman Aussie, it says, actually. Hello. Ooh. Gonna adjust my fan one moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fringy, the MGR boss lyrics trigger on the third phase. Rules of Nature was the only one to trigger on the QTE. Also, High Rex. Oh, uh, well, that's the one that sticks out in my mind for pretty obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that's uh, that's kind of the moment when it's like, yes, this is this is this is what you're in for, and it's going to be a fun ride. I haven't bought Elden Ring just yet, but I have finished uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 recently, and I wondered what those who have played it think about the story, gameplay, characters, etc. Alright, well, we'll start there. That's up to you, Fringy. Um, 
Gameplay is dated, and that's kind of a problem with all of the uh, Red Dead Redemption, uh, all of the Rockstar games. The controls, I don't know what it is. They just don't feel like uh, still tapping X to sprint. Uh, the auto lock on. There's a lot. There's some weird stuff with the controls. The moment is fun, uh, but as for story and characters, pretty strong. Um, mainly the character work is pretty strong, especially Arthur. Did I say one or two? Sorry, two. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think one has strong writing as well. It's really snappy dialogue. Well, all the Rockstar games got that super duper snappy dialogue. Bit. Uh, congrats on the new TFA video. Keep up the good rant. Thank you. And we shall as best we can. Uh, hey, did y'all see YMS talk about objective film criticism with Destiny? You should get Destiny on an episode, he'd be a good fit. Also high rags. Or oh, just also rags. Hello. Um, I don't know what subject we would go for if we had him on, if he was interested. Mm. But yeah, I, I don't think he's gonna have too much of a pushback on our perspective as it typically stands. Like, um, we actually spoke in a quick thing. It was because they were doing like streams or whatever, uh, uh, debates, YMS was, and um, mm -hmm. there was like a quick discussion had about objective film criticism, and a lot of the time what Destiny will end up saying is that, uh, yes, it is all subjective, but there's objective things you can say about the way certain things about certain things, you know, like it'll be, it'll sneak in and then you could just sort of develop it into the way we do yeah. it with anything, right? Like once we establish... You can at least say things objectively, and even if you want to jokingly refer to it as like, Oh yes, uh, J J Johnny Depp is the person who plays Jack Sparrow. I guess that's objective. You're like, cool, we'll start there. You agree that's objective. And they're like, they get all stressed out. They're like, well... Okay, oh, yeah, I was we'll... joking. That was... Oh no. Anything <laughs> I say in court can be used against me. Ah, they're like, I don't, I don't know. About it. Just like, yeah, we'll start. Then, you know, can we, can we objectively assess who a character is, what their traits are, what they want, and stuff, and, you know, it just goes from there the further along. Um, and then, you know, it just comes down to, okay, but I don't value things being consistent in my stories, and you're like, okay, I totally if believe you. Say, you. say that, <laughs> if you say that. If you say so. Yeah, so, yeah, it could be an interesting chat to have with him. Mm -hmm. uh, boop, boop. Regarding YMS controversy, he did address that the IMDb scores are for him to remember which film he has seen, not a stamp on the overall quality. To which he was asked, why not make them private? And then he said, because I wish to express myself. So I don't think that counter is quite the counter you're looking for. Uh, if the issue is, the numbers should not be made public because they can mislead people. And then he says, yes, but the numbers are for me. It's like, okay, but you could make them private and you don't. So they're not just for you, they're also to tell people what the number is. I'm pretty sure that's his major argument, is he wants to tell people why he didn't finish the film and what number he would give of to what he watched. Uh, which again, I don't actually take a huge issue with, I just wouldn't do it. Yeah, I don't have... Yeah, it's not how I would do things, but I think that this is not a big deal, guys. No. <laughs> calm and down. It's really and it got, yeah, like, it got blown up into such down. a big deal that he, he put out a video specifically to say that he's not doing it anymore because enough people were pissed mm. off about it. That kind of sucks. Though, yeah, yes. I think that's a shame. It does suck. Um, the thing is, because uh, I've spoken to Fringy and Rags about this, just it's such a optically terrible argument. It's not mm -hmm. actually a bad argument. It's just a really bad looking one. And so anybody who's passing through the the discourse will be like, "Yep, YMS is wrong, bad and man." Especially when there were people who were shitting on him on Twitter who had absolutely no familiarity with his work or his process. Well, I YMS listened to the is quite good at doing he is movie good. reviews. He is pretty good. I listened to the debates he had, and a lot of people would open with a position he doesn't even have, and he'd just be like, "No," and he'd be like, "Oh, yeah, right." Um. Yes, we do here in EFAP enjoy talking to YMS about movies. Maybe down he the line. He is a fun guy to hang out with, and I hope he continues to do his thing. I we are better for his presence. Maybe during a certain part of this year. We will talk with him a lot about all kinds of, uh, of well, madness. of movie madness. entries into a particular series. Who knows? Absolute madness. Uh, Don't get their hopes up. True. Hi, Rags. Do you think the other drive... Hello. Sorry, do you think the drive for the best graphics was a big factor behind Halo Infinite not having many game modes or maps? I don't know um, why that would necessarily... Sorry, that uh, was to you. <laughs> no, go ahead. Yeah, I'll say it either way. Um, 
I think that the emphasis on graphics, unfortunately, is it has negative impacts on everything else that can be in a game if it's placed before things like amount of mechanics and their depth uh, and a variety of things and sheer content because so much money and time and effort was spent on making it look realistic or what the fuck ever. Um, as for Infinite, I don't know, because it looks fine. You know, I, I don't... It looks fine. But it doesn't look like a game that I would say, oh, they sacrificed everything for graphics because oh, well, it looks so I fine. I, th I think what they would be pointing to is that uh, it's a new engine. Well, a new engine, but it's based on the old Halo engine. So, Well, engines um, are way more than years. just graphics. Well, no, I, I know. There's, there's obviously changes that were made because of that. But I mean, yeah, it's, it is definitely more than just the engine, you know, that matters. I hope I hope that isn't the case because that's embarrassing if it was. Because what I we got a is a fine engine. Yeah, it looks fine. I don't I have mean, any complaints looks, about how Halo looks at all. I think it looks good. Um, but I mean it's not like the craziest looking game ever, you know. Yeah, I have no complaints about it graphically. I it, but 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 yeah, everyone's complaint is not that it doesn't look good. And I don't think people go out of their way in reviews to like say how good it looks. It's generally about style. The art style is good. Mm -hmm. Not that graphically the it looks incredible or something like that. Um, which I mean, and that's way more important. There's a reason why I can sit here and play StarCraft 2 and I just it it's 12 years old and it looks pretty darn good. Uh or Deep Rock Galactic came out, and it's got its it's this great style to it that's just so appealing and awesome. Um, I just graphics are so far down on the list of things I really care about in games for me personally, but I guess a lot of people really care, and they make it a huge deal. And they have their place. Like one of the reasons I love Hellblade is because it looks really good, and the environments look amazing. And it really helps you to get just pulled into that world. So they definitely have their place, but a lot of the games I play, I do. I don't think I really play any games because of how they look. It's like as amazing cherry on the top. If it also, um, if it, if it also looks really good, like Daisy looks really quite good in terms of the, the stuff in the game and how it's all arranged and the lighting and you know how it all kind of mixes together and stuff like that but i certainly wish there was more emphasis on mechanics and variety of things because if you if you don't focus on graphics and you focus on everything else you can get a shitload of mileage out of games well your graphics will age um yes they will the whether they age better or worse that is often to do with the style and if your style is trying to be as realistic as possible, okay. So something I've heard, I don't know how true this is about the engine uh, for Halo Infinite, is that because it's called the Slip Space Engine, but it's Blam, it's built on top of Blam Engine, which is the uh, Bungie proprietary like engine that they use for the Halo games. Um, from what I understand, it is not new. It is built on top of it but changed so much that it might as well be new and i don't know what that means um but i, I don't know to me that's it's it's apparently uh it is very very difficult to work with this engine because it keeps getting built on top of and top on top and then it means that making changes is very hard um and that is causing problems for development apparently one of the know. big things that so um Bohemia Interactive who makes Arma and Daisy is they it's almost like they build platforms and not games right but Daisy they did the whole infusion engine and then they swapped engines on on Daisy and they did all this tech stuff and cuz that game used to run like crap and look shitty and now it runs really well and it looks really quite nice um and there's so many things it can do uh, and stuff can 
there can be so much happening in the background mm -hmm. and the game still runs well as a result. And they recently came up with this sort of engine update that they're going to do with Arma and anything they make in the future, like Arma 4 or whatever, is going to be part of this new engine. And they talk about how building it like modability and building its own almost like a forge mode in the game because they know what keeps their games played and healthy and alive. And if you make your game super accessible to modding and customizing and stuff, people will play it forever. They'll keep going back. They'll keep getting stuff for it and making things. And so that was, that seemed to be a huge part of their presentation was we're going to spend a lot of time and effort to make sure that we have these systems in place for people to add things to it. And that we have an engine that is extremely easy to work with for not just us, but for everybody. Because it's good for the keep the get to keep the game alive. Let me actually check the Arma 3 uh, Steam charts. I'm curious. Um, I know that it seems that a trend that's happening now is more and more developers are moving away from using their own proprietary engine and are just using Unreal Engine or Unity or something like... Uh... The new Witcher game is going to be on Unreal Engine 5 instead of uh, the Red Engine. I believe Mass Effect, the new Mass Effect and Dragon Age are not going to be on Frostbite anymore and they're going to be Unreal Engine. Um, it just seems like when you're on an engine that a lot of other people are using that was built by a company that is very focused on building engines specifically, that that seems to just be a easier experience for a lot of developers. There's a lot more resources for them to tap to understand how to work with the engine, people they can contact directly. Development be a, a complex thing, from what I understand. Arma 3 has 18,500 people playing on That's Steam. Not bad for uh, game. Yeah. It came out in uh, September of 2013. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah. And let me check, let me check Daisy. Daisy has today it had 35,000 people playing today and both of these games are very much mod it, customize it, that sort of thing. So yeah. you can bet that has a lot to do with it. Um guten tag rags. Hello. Bonjour rags. Oh, bonjour. Heil rags. Oh, heil. Springy, W-Y-R, be hand Jennifer Lopez or a gay fish. Oh, would, I, you, would you rather be hand Jen, Jennifer Lopez or a gay fish? I don't know. Hand um, Jennifer well, I know Lopez? That the gay fish should be, well, so I'm, is, it, is it meant to be reference to Mitch Connors? Oh, oh yeah, okay, right. So that, yeah, that is the question. Would I rather be Mitch Connors or uh, Kanye West? Um, uh, I, Mitch Connors seems to lead a very exciting and intense life, but um, the gay fish seems to have a lot of uh, he's 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 living it. He's his true self. He's um, not living restricted by a society. Like he's he's off doing his own thing, and he's found himself. Uh, hmm. I guess the thing with Mitch Connors is that you're like a fixed Cartman, so it means there's a lack of. I'd probably be the gay fish, yeah. If All I had right. to choose between one of the two. And hi, long man, I guess. Hello. Considering making a legit channel, because I don't see my takes being expressed often, I'm curious if they have merit. And I can't afford enough Super Chats to argue effectively with you guys, lol. Think it'd be worth it? Fuck yeah. Well, to do your own, like, YouTube channel? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, not worth it financially, you but you should absolutely do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah, if you got a passion absolutely. for some type of content, then go it's for it. It's an excellent hobby and an excellent creative outlet, and it feels good to put out something that you are proud of, and you will feel good when you put something out there and you worked hard on it, and you're very satisfied with what you've done. It's very rewarding. Uh, will you do a Mando-type reaction for the Lord of the Rings show? Doubtful. I, uh, uh, I don't know. If they're not into it, we're not going to do it. Simple as that. I don't know if it'll... Let, we might experiment. I don't know that it will be... I don't know if it'll lend itself to, a, to that. Uh, yeah. 
We'd have, yeah, I guess we won't know, but it's very, it's very possible. It'll just be a bunch of boring assholes talking and not much happening. And it's just not engaging, mm -hmm. but it could be so bad. It's hilarious. We don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. I legit, I'm not sure. Once like a, a quote unquote story trailer is released, we probably have a better idea. But uh, for now, it's kind of hard to tell. Because like, yeah. for example, if Amando season three comes out, I'll be like, yeah, we're easily doing minis for that. It'll work because of their formula. Their formula is perfect for, for Aoife. But, you know, like Kenobi, for example, we will experiment with a first try, a first recording. But if there's like barely anything for us to say or something, it would probably be scrapped. Um, so you, just, you just don't know if it'll work or not. Uh, but we shall see. If Australia exists, then why is it not on Google? That's true. Huh? That's a good. That's a good question. Yeah, it kind of cinches it, doesn't Google. it? Uh, I what? I don't understand. Like, what the conclusion is being drawn there? Hello to the emperor, the goo man, and of course to the rags. Hello. Hi there. Congrats on a hundred k, guys, and much love from Florida. Ah oh, yes, Mula did actually oh. recently uh, cross into 100k subscribers. Oh, that's Mula. right. Mula is at 100k now. How very special. Who knows what we will do to celebrate it later. Well, uh, as it stands, we're likely going to do maybe a gaming stream of some kind. We'll find some game. Play. Maybe yes. that, uh, that cool Aliens game, um, uh, Fireteam Elite? Over that. Oh, oh no. wow, that sounds amazing. Yeah, it feels really good. And, that was uh, not yeah. fun by, by the second <laughs> half. That was a damn, that was a drag. We just had to finish it. Yeah. Yeah, I like how we started. It was like, this is all right. And then we were just <laughs> like, oh, fucking just die already. Just please be finished, yeah. I think, well, we love the Android levels. There was at least that. Those oh, Android yeah, those levels were, were super innovative, yeah. you know? They were really innovative, yeah. I love when I when I buy an aliens game and I'm shooting at humans and sh full chest high walls everywhere. That's just so awesome and I love it very much. Oh yeah. General observation: standing on your heels activates your abs, so you can get a workout standing in line. Hmm. All huh. right, I didn't know that. That does sound useful. I know you guys are not super into it, but did you hear how they retcon all of WoW current lore with the latest patch? Also, the no. Halo 3 Believe trailer still holds up. Go watch that instead. Yes, it does. But yeah, no, a lot of those about... Halo 3 trailers um, are good. But no, I didn't know about the, uh, the workout it? stuff. No, the World of Warcraft. The Warcraft that stuff, yeah. <laughs> one. <laughs> um, I didn't know about that. Well, that if it's true, that sounds like devastating. I'm surprised I haven't heard it from anybody else, but maybe it's because World of Warcraft players are kind of just... Disenfranchised as fuck right now. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe that's how I. I, I think a lot of them are like. Seems that, yeah. like that's the sentiment around World of Warcraft right now. Well, do you remember when we were we were doing a catch-up stream and Az just came in to explain like what happened to yeah, World of Warcraft? Yeah, I was playing Final Fantasy instead. Yeah, and how that's taken over. It's like, yeah, that was just a thing that happened. Obviously, the three of us are really not involved in either of those games, so we just don't know. What's no, going I don't on. know anything about them. Um. B -b 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 New Zealand is still here. Hello. Oh, hey. good. Yeah, good. Good stuff. Uh, Morley, I've sent you fan art on Twitter and Discord. Also, Animal of the Day, the Lesbian Lizard. An all... Uh, all female species? Also... Wait, all female? So, like, they just... They just get reproduce on their own, I'm guessing? No. Lesbian Let's Lizard? See. The Les the New Mexico Whiptail is a female only species of lizard found in the southwestern United States in New Mexico and Arizona in the northern Mexico uh, and in northern Mexico in Chihuahua. It is the official state reptile of New Mexico. Um it is one of many lizard species known to be parthenogenetic which is a form of asexual reproduction in which growth and development of embryos occurs without, for, occurs without fertilization by sperm. And um, we've got the, the, the meme was uh, representative of the mouse coming for Buffy. Only a matter of time. That is accurate it's for the mouse depiction. Yeah. And it's, got, it's got a little... Is that Mandalorian's helmet? Coming off its uh, finger there? Um, 
that on his, his, his little finger? Yeah, like Boba Fett or something like that. I'm not sure. Could be. Yes. Could be. A grotesque creature that we are sure to see more of in terms of it destroying things. Woohoo! Very nice. Um, That's haunting. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Also, fish of the day, the tr Triglidae? Trigli Triglidae? Triglidae? Sea robin, apparently, is what it is. Have a look, see at you. Gosh, did you guys realize there was this many creatures on Earth? Who would have knew? I had no clue. I had, I did not have I thought any there was clue. like five, you know, horse, cow, and that was about it. But no, there's, uh, there's all, all kinds. Yeah, he looks pretty neat. Look at him go. One of them bottom feeder type fish, I think. Deep in the fish tank to clean it up. Uh, where are we? Um, iPhone with access to modern internet or an AK-47. Both items are indestructible, have infinite charge, and teleport to your hand on command. Which item would you choose to conquer th the year 1000s of Europe? I guess... Year 1000s of Europe? Like the year... I don't like know the year 1000? Yeah. <laughs> That's a better way to put it, yeah. And so the options are... So the, the stipulations are that they, uh, I could summon them whenever they want. They have... Infinite charge. What, what? So I assume that means the ba the the phone doesn't run out of battery and the AK doesn't run out of bullets. And the iPhone apparently links to modern internet. I'm trying to think of how useful that would iPhone. be. I guess you can advance iPhone. your society dramatically. Yeah, it would be the iPhone in that case. The amount of uh, yeah, the the just everything that you could learn from the internet. How do you make this? How do you make also, that? How do you do this? What I was about to say, the, like, how do you make that? The iPhone wins because you can learn how to make AK-47s from it, right? Um, in eventually. theory, yeah. You'd have to... Eventually, yeah. Certainly way sooner. The, the problem isn't... Like, you, you could take a steam in... Like, if you, if you took the, a steam engine blueprint back to the Renaissance, they could make one, probably. And to be um, fair, uh, going to, like, storming let's say a castle or whatever else with your AK-47, whatever it may be in the 1000, I guess, a tribal place, whatever. Uh, the All it takes is one good arrow and you're dead. Or one good strike from somebody. As much as you could, like, obliterate a whole civilization with just that gun. Like, I don't know. Not as safe. And you'll be heralded as a god with the, uh, the phone, right? Theoretically. I don't know. I, I think I'd opt for the phone. I might opt for the phone. Oh, yeah, the phone. Of it's the easy. Of information. Yeah. Knowing that everything you can learn about disease prevention and medicine and construction materials and techniques, um, figuring out all of this civilization tip building and stuff. To be fair, uh, that's a lot of people highlight, and you need to overcome the part where they all think of you as a crazy demon sorcerer person that they may want to kill. You gotta right. hope you don't get that result. Even if, if you didn't even tell them about the phone and just say, like, I know how to do all this stuff. Then they think that you're just super amazingly intelligent. What's their language going to be like in the year 1000? Uh, huh. I don't know. Just say Jeebus gave it to you. I think it's an interesting question. I think the AK-47 is more straightforward in its benefits. Uh, the phone yeah. will require complications and time to make use of it. Yeah, there's definitely an aspect of what can I accomplish with one AK-47? Whereas the access to modern human knowledge is gonna be pretty nuts. Goodbye, Moodle. Sleep well. Bye. Bye, Moodle. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you mad about Shapiro's Star Wars ranking list? Well, how about President's list? A. George Washington B. Ronald Reagan Mc uh, Ronald Reagan McDonald, CJFK, FFDR, Fringy Talk. Um, I'm 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 not Matt. Star Wars ranking. I don't even know what it is in full. He um, ranked. Uh, I don't know. That uh, it was it was it was a silly rankings. I, I we did. Oh it sure, ago. but I mean it's probably funny, right? It's not something. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Head, right. <laughs> As for the president ranking, I guess that's that, that feels like a whole conversation that we don't need to have right now. 
Really, it would take a while to rank the presidents. Yeah, I guess just Ronald Reagan. That's just kind of a funny one to me, but... <laughs> Number two. Like, damn, how could there be like 44 presidents or something? 45? I don't know. I guess everybody puts George Washington... Oh, and I guess where's Abraham Lincoln in that top five? Or like Teddy Roosevelt or uh, whatever. Whatever. We don't need to have that conversation right now. When I fought the Mimic Tier boss, I was surprised it morphed into my own character, but then insulted when it proceeded to spam roll around the arena before I even started attacking. The game is nuts. It's, 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 it's making fun of you. It's making fun of you. Hmm. I'd like to hear how in God's name you could possibly defend the Melena boss fight as anything other than the worst thing Fromm's ever cr conceived. I'd take anything from DS2 over that hot garbage. Listen, what we said was that her heal was way too effective and her big spinny move is just bad. Bad. Naughty. No newspaper on the head sort of thing. Bad. No spin move. If those two things are enough to say that she's the worst thing they've ever created, I suppose... That's the position you can take, but I actually quite like most of everything about her other than those two aspects. Uh, Lord Mauler of England, have you considered a Longzilla by Roland Emmerich? It'll be an EFAP for the ages. <laughs> Longzilla by Roland Longzilla. Emmerich. <laughs> Longzilla. Longzilla. Uh, hi, Fringy. Scritches for the real good boy. Oh my god. Oh, uh, whoa now. Thanks for the scritches. Hmm. I just rewatched Game of Thrones the earlier seasons, and seeing how John and Egret were handled just makes season eight sludge with Danny and John even more fu in, uh, frustrating. I never realized how much I cared. Yeah, everything they did later, they technically speaking had a blueprint for how they've done it before, but writing characters, but they just fucking failed miserably. Sad face. The day of the day is Wednesday. Oh, oh nice. Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, Wings quote of the day. Poorly walnuts, you act like I'm an idiot just because I said lasagna cost $30. What? $30? <laughs> where, where are you getting your lasagna? That's some maybe gourmet maybe lasagna. lasagna. Maybe he buy a lot of lasagna? Yeah, he I, buys it, it in bulk. Where he probably buys a lot of lasagna. Yeah. We, that's, yeah, it's either gourmet lasagna or a copious amount, a copious volume of, uh, lasagna. Would it be copious to him, though? Would he be like, no, this is a perfectly, like, movie bob with the McDonald's thing, you know? Well, th this was a, didn't he say relatively small for the average size person? Wasn't Fairly that small for the Something average like size that. person, yeah. Uh, bonus, about ten minutes later. And about the whole $30 lasagna thing, that guy should have been banned six streams ago. He then banned anyone using the word lasagna. Probably about a hundred people, lol. Oh no, the Jeez. internet cut out when you were first saying it. Can you say that again? Oh. Um, Sorry, I gotta take a phone call. Oh yeah, people are saying F. Let's wait a sec to make sure it is back. Small amount of McDonald's for the average person, yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> You do wonder, like, what was going through his head at that time? Does he actually think... <laughs> like, yes, this is a true reflection of reality. Click send. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what Three was the quote again? Well, I was going to say, wait until... You oh, still hear me, oh, right? I... But... Ooh, uh, I mean, mine's up. Okay. Yeah. Yes. It says on my mine's thing up. right now, YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. Uh... It's- it's working. Why must you torture me, YouTube? Tell me the truth. Are we good, or are you- I'll- I'll just- I'll just say it again. Alright, here we go. Uh... So his next quote was, about the whole lasagna thing. That guy should have been banned six streams ago. <laughs> he then- he then bans anyone using the word lasagna, and that's probably about a hundred people. <laughs> Oh, no! Can't be having the lasagna doing? discussions, all right? Oh, man! <laughs> Just... <laughs> if you say lasagna, I know you're trolling me. Yeah. Uh, I beg you, please do a live reaction to Jay Longbone's Karen video <coughs> release today. Also, hi, Rags. Hello! I'm sure it's excellent, and you will get another dose of that around Halloween. Oh, spooky. But, um... But, yeah, I'd rather just recommend people check it out instead of doing, like, a live reaction. Yeah. 
It's very probably quite good. We had oh, a lot yes. of fun watching that movie. In fact, I hope to make food uh, soon, and so I will likely watch it while making and consuming food. Hey, that well, sounds like boy. a good idea. And that is the highest compliment you can give to a YouTube video. It is food watching material, uh, or food eating material. I will I guess. cook and eat to it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Rags, can you describe your excitement for and the subsequent disappointment by The Green Knight? Yes, I can. I watched The Green Knight with uh, these two blokes. Um, it was very... It, it, it felt very time-wasty. Uh, it was very, very artsy. And it was a struggle to figure out what they meant with a lot of this stuff. It was a struggle to find out what the point of certain scenes was. I feel like it was very meandery and a lot of stuff could have been cut in a much better story done in its place. I feel like we learned shockingly little about our protagonist uh, until the, the last 10 minutes, which is really all I feel like I can recommend is just watch the last 10 minutes. The uh, last two it, minutes are pretty good. Yeah, it, but man, I, I feel like it was just a drag and I feel like it was a big waste of time for a lot of it. Very disconnected and disjointed sort of story. Not a fan at all. Um, it, it had some good nifty shots and stuff. It, it had cool designs and things of that nature. But man, it was just not not interesting enough to really grab me, take me anywhere. Uh, yeah, I um, I think I understood what they were going for, um, but I think their mm -hmm. execution of a lot of the ideas are a little wonky and gave me a lot of things to think about that I don't know where, what they were going for. Uh, especially when he got to that that house with the people in it, there was lots of lots of weird things happened there that I was like, okay, yeah. I'm not I'm not following anymore. I'm confused. Uh, yeah, there you go, Bringy. What does water smell like? Uh, I guess it depends on the water, doesn't it? All right, that's about all I got for that. Yeah. Miriam is trivialized by a bow. Even with the teleport, she can't retaliate, so she's broken both ways with no middle ground. Shite, no matter what. I I'm sure there are ways to knock her out quickly or whatever with different things here and there, but man, she is like hated by almost everybody. So it may be. Well, that's got to say something, right? Something's going on, yeah. Lego Star Wars EFAP, more a playthrough at least. I have played through a lot of Lego on the catch-ups. Uh, I think I will likely try and get a playthrough of the Batman Lego game. The only problem with that one is that that's some really copyrighted music, right? I have to make sure that that's, that doesn't come through. Yeah, that might cause problems. Yeah. But um, unless you're talking about the new one, in which case, yes, I am interested in streaming that. That might be the next game I stream now because I need some... Uh, some, some other stuff to do, but I do want to... There's lots of games I want to play, but, you know, when it's, like, brand new, it's kind of like one that... Like, ooh, it'd be fun to play this, see what it's all about. Loig Elden Ring, it were. And who doesn't love Legos? Uh, keep us updated with Cowboy Bebop, Fringy. A bit overrated, but the character work is done really well throughout. Episodes 5, 17, and 24 are the best to me. Ah, I haven't progressed with anymore really <laughs> since uh since i I've, I've only watched three episodes but i'll i'll probably get around to it again eventually fair enough Mola, do you see dang tim's response to your criticisms of dark souls 2 pvp i have not but i've said before that's probably the weakest part of my video i think uh I didn't do much in terms of exploring it i've always had a bit of an aversion with pvp in those games uh, not just for the netcode, but, like, I just don't think it plays very well. Um, so I kind of rushed that sequence section. So anybody who has a good knowledge of how PvP works across all the games is going to be able to uh, definitely poke holes in my in that part. Uh, using healing spells on to kill Royal Revenant. I think that's the hand man. Um, I didn't, I didn't have healing spells when I was doing my run, so, you know. Um, I didn't even know healing spells did, are they offensive? Like, they heal while attacking things, or? I don't know. 
Uh, the green statue, Ashes of War, a great early game. Fast, strong, cause bleed, and there are two of them. Also, you get it as a pre-game item. It's dumb. A pre-game item? What would a pre-game item be? Like, like pre-order bonus, or are we talking... Uh, oh, do you mean you can select it in the, um, in your... You get to pick one item to come with yeah, you, right? It's a lot. Yeah, oh, well, I mean, at that point, yeah, that's definitely a potentially wise idea to help you out in the game, I suppose. Uh, Fringy, best impression of Jeremy getting punched? Uh... <laughs> <sighs> After that, man, if someone didn't have context, yeah, no, I know, I know, I was thinking that one, but I, I felt that it was important to commit to the performance, yeah. I think the art is more important than whether or not someone understands it, yeah, yeah, which is clearly how the Green Knight felt, yeah. <laughs> uh, item, item descriptions are not immersion breaking, I agree, I. I would never make that argument unless, like, the whole game ran that way, and I'd be like, it's out of sync with the rest of it. But I don't know any games that do that. Some of the chat said, I was working in a quiet room and your noises came through from <laughs> 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 uh, I remember that happened to me. Oh, I remember it. I was, um... I was at high school. I was, uh... I was, it was in the computer room, and I was watching, uh, I'll be in the chief. And um, it was a gag where it was uh, where Chief was uh, cheating on uh, Xbox Live, and then a, a guy from Bungie comes with a bad hammer, and he says, "And like, I was, I was, I was listening to it. And I didn't have headphones, and I was playing it through the speaker, but I had it quiet enough that nobody could hear it really. But then there's a part where the the, the guy's like, "So what do you have to say for yourself, huh?" Ah! He's like, it's really loud, and he's like, "How long do you think your little cheating spree was gonna last?" And then I was like, rapidly trying to turn it down because everybody was looking at me. I was stupid. I don't know what I was expecting. I thought it was quieter than that, and yet it wasn't. Mm. I remember there was one time when I was in like a lecture and I was watching something funny. That was stupid because I was laughing and everybody could hear it. <laughs> Uh, hi, Rags. Hello. Greetings, Fringy. Hey. Hello, Marble. Hello. I think Gary called me Marble last night. It was funny. Marble? He was like, I don't know what it was. It was just uh, for secondary. He saw me as a Marble, perhaps. Uh, a little behind, but the Mr. Hands enemy, as Mola calls them, can be stunned slash hurt via healing spells, for your information. Does everybody just have healing spells? I didn't have any healing spells. I feel left out. Um, Angry Birds jump-started the mobile market. That's, uh, I guess that's an interesting point for innovative games. Yeah, Angry yeah. Birds would have to count. Yeah, I didn't even consider I don't count games. Candy Crush. What about um, that, um, that game that went crazy popular for, like, a week or so? It was the... Oh, Flappy Bird? Oh, fuck yeah, that game. <laughs> <laughs> didn't the creator get, like... Harassed to hell and back. I can't remember what happened. I remember that there was a whole escapade and everything about it. Yeah, it's just the game makes people really furious, and he just got loads of people being like, "Fuck you for making this," <laughs> <laughs> as if it's like they don't have a choice to like yeah. just stop. I guess uh, Undertale probably has to count right as a uh, yeah a so. game that was super influential. I don't know if it innovates or anything. I haven't played enough of it. Uh, funny thing, I got my mum to play through Portal 1 and she really, really like, really enjoyed dispatching turrets. Well, yeah, they're, they're, they're trying to shoot you, you know? Yeah. Get them. You gotta get them. Uh, why do From Software games let you choose your character's voice, but don't actually give them voice actors for the dialogue? Which is why. Uh, I guess you choose it just for the, uh, ooh! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Good, good sound effects. Yep. You know, I will say though, the best death sound effects come from melee. They are, they are getting some use in that end game video. I don't know, man. Oof! Oh, can wow. anything beat Yoda's <laughs> death sound effect from Lego? I don't know. I can't remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> no matter where he is, you'll just go. <laughs> Damn, I can't remember the Captain Falcon. Whoa! I think that was Captain Falcon. 
and Kirby was like, wow. Oh, those are burnt into my brain. I'm so sorry. No, I mean, it's okay. They're funny sounds. All right. As well as foxes in general, interesting voice lines. Opinion on Sister Frida boss fight from DS3. I remember liking her. It was tough, but I remember liking her. That's been so long, I can't really say more than that. Um, are there more wheels or chairs in the world? Uh, probably more wheels. Probably more wheels, yeah. Yeah, probably. Uh, unless we count the, ch the chairs and cars, in which case each car that has four wheels probably has five seats. I don't know. If, yeah, I don't know if we do. I don't know what exactly counts as a chair. Mm. Even then, though, we got a lot of wheels. We do. True. We do. Those wheels, they're, they're sneaky. I don't trust them. Do you think Plinkett will make a Tross review? Um, I think he was... He said he was, like, done with making Star Wars stuff after The Last Jedi. I think that killed it for him. Not, like, you know, discussions on Half in the Bag and stuff, but, like, mainline videos, I think. I'm not sure. Um. Oh, oh, oh. Also, have Theo debate shiny effects on the Clone Wars, Hyrax. Hello. If they want to do that, they can go right ahead. Yeah, I, don't think I just don't really EFAP. care about. It's bad enough when one of us doesn't have context, or two of us. But if all three of us lack context, it's just like we're just hosting a debate at that point. I think mm -hmm. for moderation, which we tried once, it didn't go well. Uh, best Mortal Kombat 11 ending was Rambo's because he didn't change it. I didn't even know Rambo was in it. Uh, yeah, 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 they got Rambo, they got Robocop, they, yeah. I know Predator and Terminator are in it, right? Uh, I believe, was Pre Predator was in Mortal Kombat 10, I think Terminator was in 11. Oh, okay. And then they, yeah, and they had Robocop and, uh, Rambo, and I think they had another one that I'm forgetting right now. Would love to hear you guys' thoughts on DJ Peach Cobbler's Elden Ring Feels Like the End video. Possibly even have him on as a guest? Irax. Hello. Feels Like the End. That's an interesting uh, title. I wonder what it's about. Hmm. Might have to check it out. Who knows? Uh, sending this again, since I'm not sure if you read it. The lead narrative designer for World of Warcraft said that he thought Game of Thrones Season 8 was brilliant. Fuck me for still being invested in this game. He's butchering. Oh boy, that's not a good sign. Very bad sign, yeah. It's, uh... That's a very bad <laughs> sign. We, uh... <laughs> I like that. Just having a perspective on Game of Thrones, it's like, oh, what does this it's tell so, me about yeah. you, my friend? <laughs> I mean, remember, we met someone who was very pro Season 8 Game of Thrones. That went well. They have interesting ideas about things uh, when, when they feel that way, you know? Cool. Mm-hmm. Reminder, Sean Bean doesn't even make the list of top 10 actors with most movie deaths. I think Samuel Jackson's that super high up, isn't he? That wouldn't surprise me, but you got to wonder what the ratio is, and then how many of them are in mainstream movies, ones that everyone has seen right. more, or more likely to have seen. That's got to explain it. Mm-hmm. Um, have you heard the original RE director's cut mansion basement music? If not, give it a quick listen. It's been known as Clowns Farting in the Basement. Um, I have no <laughs> clue. What, what, yeah, I, I like the what idea that it gives away that they're clown farts rather yeah, than rather than regular farts. farts. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's called cool. I guess original RE director's cut mansion basement music for anybody who's interested in hearing um, clowns fart. Which I, I no judging, no judging. Uh, Infinite, one of the most meh games I've played. Campaign was mostly just repetition, and multiplayer has no content. Still better than 2042 though. I that doesn't surprise me at all. What uh what do people who've completed the campaign say about it? Do you guys know? Uh, uh I've got a friend who completed the campaign. He said he had to really push himself to finish it because it got really repetitious. And mm. it's clear that there's a lot of recycled assets that weren't really Yeah, you know, it just felt like copy pasty. Right. And I think he said he came to he came to me the other day and he said that he had a um a theory that it was the re the the map was a retrofitted or the remains of a battle royale map 
that they eventually decided to scrap and then redo into an open world Halo campaign. He says it has that feel to it and that design to a lot of the buildings. A lot of the interiors are like that, where there's no deep interiors to a lot of stuff. Um, it's very much just like, it comes across as that. Generally functional, like a normal FPS campaign sort of thing, I'm assuming. Nothing like catastrophic. Yeah, it's generally functional. It's just he just said like the design is it feels like it's supposed to be a battle royale game. Right. Interesting. Uh, you should invite Patrician TV onto EFAP. He's a fellow longman who makes great video game related content. His Oblivion video is Chef's Kiss. Oh. Maybe we will in the future. Uh, nah, Infinite Campaign was fun as hell. 8 out of 10, easy. Alright. Oh, alright. I've literally not played it at all, so I just wouldn't know. Um, fuck, marry, kill Arwen Galadriel Denethor. So we're killing Denethor. That seems like the easy choice, yeah. That seems uh, like a really easy choice. Um, fucking Arwen, Marion, uh, Galadriel. Yeah, I got nothing else to add to that. I think that's what I would choose. Galadriel's got just a lot of experience. She knows her shit. And she's got a lot of connections and stuff. It would be fun to, yeah. to have a life there. and Learn a lot. Yeah, and De Denethor, he's just... He's oh, crazy, crazy, evil. Yeah, he's brain. crazy and evil, yeah. yeah. A bit of a flaw, I'd say. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. <laughs> I wonder how that would factor into that decision. Hello, boys. Hope you've all been well. Since Rags and Fringy are here, I figure I might as well share more deets on my character, Kelligan. Um, Kelligan? Uh, yeah, he talked about it a bit while I was streaming uh, Elden Ring. Let me see if I can... Because obviously these are broken up. Um... With Kelligan being so old, I did have to put in consideration for him not being surprised by much, but understanding his limitation when combat is involved. <laughs> uh, how do y'all feel about the writer being involved in the story? It's something I've planned on doing and something I've had to put thought into. What do you mean the writer being involved in the story? The only like thing the that makes me think about is Supernatural when um, it turns out the, the writer of like a series of books was accidentally almost writing the lives of the main characters, and then it turns out he was God, actually. Um, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by putting the writer into the story. Uh, I'm trying to think of, like, attempts at doing that that are good, and I'm coming up on empty. I, the when, when people say the writer being a part of the story, I think of Alan Adale, the, the rooster from Robin Hood. Because he is the narrator, but he is also a character in the story who's like a, a merry man. Oh, yeah, maybe... Do they mean like... in the, Like, does Bilbo count and Frodo as they are writing after their adventures? And Do you mean like that, or do you mean more like meta-breaking, where it's like a guy in the universe is writing and then things come true as a result? I am not sure, I'm afraid, so I can't really comment. Uh, if Rags created goo, would it be called Ragu? Let's see why not. Possibly. It's, it's, it's one potential name, yeah, for sure. Possibly. I don't want to... Yeah, I, I won't say yet, but possibly. Uh, Fireteam wishes it could be anything close to Deep Rock Galactic. Play that instead, you won't be disappointed. I doubt Fireteam has any connection to Deep Rock Galactic's gameplay, right? Like, I'm, I'm assuming these things oh, are... Bro, it's a co-op game where you shoot hordes of enemies. Is oh, the I mean, only... that's... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's like the only possible thing that I could draw a connection between those two with. But yeah, fair enough. Uh, boom, boom. Fuck, Mary kill Movie Bob Wings Telescope Fish. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're killing Bob. I'm just skipping that. Oh, right. I mean, yeah, I, 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 that that one's got this. There's just too many elements to it that are too horrifying. <laughs> Comparing so. movie Bob to a telescope fish. Yeah. Ha, Fringy! I knew it. There are species of frog that can smell water. Your vague answer suggests you cannot. Therefore, you're no frog, but in fact a bird. No, he's right though. It, it depends on what the water. I it was said in it the depends water. On, he didn't how can say, I make yeah. a distinction? 
How could I make a distinction between the smells of water if I was incapable of smelling anything? What? How could I appreciate any difference between their smell? Your gotcha is flawed, my friend. Yeah, because they should have... The, the, what they think you that. said is just an outright no, but what you but said was it depends. Because they yeah. said, what does water smell like? And you said, well, it depends on the water. Which means he exactly. can smell water. Yeah. Dun dun dun. <laughs> yep. Bringing in rags. Thoughts <laughs> yeah. on Halo Reach's story and noble team. Story's not awesome, but the tone is great. Yeah, tone's great. The story is like it and feels kind of and Vinny. Flat. But yeah, the characters yeah. are pretty eh. flat. I would say is yeah. the right word. And yeah, gets a, the, but the the tone's awesome. It really yeah, has that's a great what tone. saves it. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it it definitely knows what it's trying to convey in terms of a tone, and that sort of rescues mm -hmm. a lot of it. I would say so. Uh, Farmville is actually the original big mobile game. It's so old, it's before phones could even run games like that, and it was played through Facebook. I remember people yeah, playing Farmville on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Barfy God. Long Schlong wants to give you a fucking shovel in Farmville. It's yeah. like, well, leave me alone. I don't care. Stop. That was a huge thing back in the day. Grow your farm. Grow this. Make it bigger. Tell your friends. We'll give you bonuses if you get your Park friends made to tons sign of up. jokes about that, and then... And then <laughs> Stan, he ended up getting on Facebook because everybody was bullying him too. And he gets sucked into the game. And it's Tron. And then he goes into uh, Kyle's farm and he's like, you gotta, you know, you gotta, you gotta get me out of here. And he's like, well, dude, I have to harvest my crops before, like, spring. Dude, fuck your crops. And he just starts ripping them off and kicking him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rags, opinions on classes and mission types of deep rock i guess we'll start there uh i like him i've really only played scout because i play with people and that's what i've been playing and they play other stuff so i can only speak to that class which i really like but it seems like all of the classes have definite uses and you want to have someone of those you know classes around um i don't feel like any other class is stepping on another's toes each has something useful and functional that they bring to the team and the mission types are neat. I like the idea that the missions can vary greatly in terms of what you are trying to do, whether they are escort style missions or just general exploration missions, or whether you have to build a um like like build a, a fuel pump and get that sorted out and then defend it. I'm always and it's not just the mission types, it's the environments that you're in have a lot of variety to them as well. So that makes them uh, feel fresh and difficulty is as well. Some are way harder than others um, and you do harder and harder ones as you go. Uh, but yeah, it's it's not a game that it's easy to feel bored with. Um, favorite class and are you excited for season two? Uh, favorite class, I suppose, is Scout by default, but. I, I don't keep up with seasons in it, but yeah, sure, I'm always happy to get more content for it. Also, hi, Molar and Fringy. Stream Mario Kart DLC? Uh, yeah, maybe. I've been playing a bit of Elden Ring, but I've also been playing Mario Kart this morning in between mm. my Godzilla stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, the DLC courses are... I like them, but it's kind of like a mixed bag, I guess. Um, I don't know why Toad Circuit is here. It's a really boring course to bring in as DLC. I'm not sure why there are no anti-gravity sections on the uh, new courses. Um, feels like a weird omission. It just makes these, a couple of that with the visuals, which are nice, but definitely inconsistent with the base game. It just kind of gives off the impression that these are not well integrated into Mario Kart 8, but they're a welcome addition. Ninja Hideout's cool. Yeah, that one's cool. I like the tour courses as well. They got some gimmicks to them that are interesting. Can you guys please play the clown farts? I know it's an ask, but it's hilarity. It's from the original RE Director's Cut Mansion Basement. It's I written will... in our uh, chat here, so that I will take a look at that. I've, I've got it written down. Well, they down. want me to play it on I stream, just... I think. I don't know if we can do that for copyright reasons. Was oh, a game. Uh, hmm. I guess you're right. If it what hmm. I I've heard this before. To. I think people put this in videos. 
I, I can I can see why it's called Clown Farts. Yeah. And, and and I do wonder whoever made this why they were why they made this. Um I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stop playing it now. Alright. Beautiful. Uh woo, just beat the Elden Beast teeth in. Unholy inbred hate spawn of goddess of AIDS and Dragon Lord. I ran out of creative insults YouTube will allow. Oh you got you got plenty in there, so not bad. And uh yeah, good stuff. It's uh it's tough. It's a bit of a bit of a boss. Pose. Um I guess like the supernatural idea. Whereas me <laughs> being the writer appearing toward the end of the story merely to see my creations have ended up. Hmm. Um, I would I would be curious about what you would want to benefit from by doing that, like narratively, or is it just something you think would be cool? And I wonder how much prob would that not create a lot of problems for those characters realizing they've been written, or is that not something they realize? I don't know. Um, yeah, I, it's tough to tough to sort of give any advice or impressions on that. I have my characters keep their characteristics, but overall they have free will. I know it's a bit confusing, but I hope it clears things up. So you as the right to provide the characteristics and then sort of let them do whatever they want? So as the writer, you're not really writing any plot, presumably. You're just a cosmic gene splicer? Yeah, you're like this guy. He will be an angry person who likes cheese. And then you just let him go. You kind of just say, yeah, 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 kind of, kind of what, what Rags just said. Hmm. Can he, through great struggle, eventually become a calm person who despises cheese? Maybe, or because it, it, that would be the true test of free will, I suppose. Do you hate cheese? <laughs> you have triumphed over free will. Uh, Fringy, do you like pistachios? I think that's a no. That All sounds right. like a big no. He hates them. I love them. Yeah. I think they are very yummy. Sweet. Uh, Fringy and Rags, thoughts on Halo 4's story? I don't even remember it, really. You know what, well, well, I'll ask both of those questions again when Fringy is back. Um, building is out, so will you try out Fortnite now? I no! I don't care about Fortnite, I'm sorry. If I'm playing a battle royale, it's Apex. I don't. I don't. I never liked Fortnite at all. Also, building is out. That's interesting. That seemed to be a huge component of the game, and they just removed it. I don't know. Yeah, that seems weird. But uh, I don't know. let me. Uh, well, let me see. Uh, Fortnite's new season. Removes building, adds Doctor Strange, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, app app yeah appar uh, <laughs> apparently, Fortnite has turned off building in the default mode for the new season. Is that temporary or is that just forever now? I don't... I don't know. Um... It says temporarily, but uh, I don't know. Weird. It was one of the things I didn't like about it in its current iteration. Uh, how you could how you could shoot someone and then they just fucking turn into a three story building. And I'm like, <laughs> what the f what the fuck is happening? And they spin around and they just build all these towers and shit. And now they have like their like bait. Like I get the idea of having. I feel like cre creating cover is a very, you got to be careful when everyone can do it. It's got to be like a core element of the game that you have to like, because um, not doing it seems like it's a huge disadvantage to not do. I never liked it. I like the idea of, I don't know, it just seems I never like that aspect of it. I don't like being able to create, because not just concealment, but pr but proper cover. Um, when that should be something I feel is almost relegated to particular, I guess they don't do like classes or characters or anything, but 
Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe there's an item you could pick up that is something you could deploy that becomes cover or something. But yeah, I was just, uh, yeah, uh, didn't feel like it fit. I didn't care for it. Didn't like it. Not my thing. Ringy, do you like pistachios? Um, I don't know what that is. You don't? Well, That's... I know I've heard of it, but what, what does it look like? Uh, they are greenish nuts inside. Oh, no, a... I, I don't. Nah, not really. You don't like greenish nuts? No, I don't what actually. About what about Shrek? What? Huh? Do you like Shrek? The film Shrek? Yeah. Yeah, Shrek is a funny film. Yeah, all right. Takes all right. care of that. Yeah. Uh, Fringy, thoughts on Halo 4's story? Uh, it's not as good as people think it is. <laughs> um, yeah. I guess maybe they want more. Um, Chief is inconsistent. He's a very different person. Uh, Cortana stuff is cool. Um, but, like, the plot is pretty bad. <laughs> Alright. That's my notes. And you guys play Star Wars KOTOR 1 or 2? No. Played two no. brief. I, I think I played one of them very briefly. I forget which one, but it was so long ago, I effectively have not played them. No. Hmm. Perhaps one day. Hey, they, they're, they're redoing the KOTOR, right? It'll be great. That's where I will play it. And I will say it's the definitive version, and people will really enjoy that. Nice. Yay. Uh, wait, Rags, you actually write stuff down to listen to? I thought you all just said you'd get to it and never do like Fringy. Thanks for playing it, by the way. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. No problem. Wow. <laughs> it is in our call. Original RE Director's Cut Mansion Basement Music. Yeah. I want Sabaton to write a song about the Emu War. You said this before. I remember it, and I don't disagree. Fringu, as an avian lawyer, what are your thoughts on illegal bird migration? I'm not an avian lawyer. Hey, what do you mean? Of course you are. Just I'm not. I am, I am not an avian. <laughs> I am not an ave. You're a bird with a lot of green. Nor am I a lawyer. Oh, you're not a lawyer? No. Damn. Well. Wow. Uh, what is stream I mean, who chats? Who isn't a lawyer? What do who you... isn't a lawyer? It's like, yes. <laughs> what does it mean, Rags? Are easy. Yep. We got our degrees, and I took the bar exam. Lawonomics, right? That's the degree. Yep. The law economy. Mm hmm. Uh, what, what do stream chats do you still need to read? So, got. Um, there's another catch up streams ones that I've got. We have the Spider-Man No Way Home stream. We have the two Hassan reaction stream ones. And Falcon the Winter Soldier. And I think Black Widow as well. So, um, we still got quite a bit. But I have good amounts of hope that we will get through them. We, we shall do it. Mm -hmm. uh, please play Hades, you cabbage. I will at some point. Just not right now. <laughs> All right, someone said, and, and this one. We are almost caught up on this one. I have uh, four left. Ooh. Rags, thoughts Yay. on standalone complex? I like it quite a bit, but it's been so long since I've watched it, I would want to rewatch it because those that show is very wordy. Um, and for better or worse, a lot of those episodes, particularly... Um, I think it was Innocence, Ghost in the Shell Innocence, was very big on oh, really all of them. It's characters talking very um, philosophically, citing philosophers and, and, and talking about these sorts of things in a very open manner. Uh, like, it's, it's very, sometimes it does feel like it's just a writer trying to almost clumsily put get, just present some philosophical concept and then they try to have a story that puts it into context. Um, 
but I, I do like it. I really like a lot of the design of things. I enjoy a lot of the characters in it. Um, it's got a great vibe. Um, but I, I think it all meshes together really well. But I do need to watch um, Standalone Complex again. That is the first season of Ghost in the Shell. Hmm. Uh, hi, Rax. Hello. Stayed up till 9 a.m. beating Elden Ring. Godfrey is annoying. Radagon is great when he doesn't decide to pull nasty shite out of his ass. Elden Beast was visually awesome, but easy when not using BS. Um, sure, yeah, I think they're, they're fair. I'm, 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 I'm assuming you found it quite fun and engaging to stay up. Hope you had fun with it. Um, you won't answer my question, but you'll play the clown farts. Clown farts are much easier to acknowledge and play than the question of the the other thing, all right? I think there's a big difference. Clown farts are chill, you know, nice and chill. Uh, what is 343's greatest narrative achievement? Um, yeah, pro probably the, the end of Halo 4. The ending's really strong. That's probably the best thing they've done narratively. Hmm. Uh, so, Mola, can we expect a new video within two years? Well, you'll be getting a new video probably April 1st, right? So is that. But as for a, Ooh, video, a video past that, no guarantees of whenever it may be. But work is beguns. Uh, Fringy, I love you, but you're so wrong about Chief in Halo 4. It causes me physical, mental, and spiritual anguish. I'd say how, but there's not enough dollar. And then it says or. I'm not sure what else it's going to be, but maybe space. All right. Well... Gonna have to Fair agree enough. to disagree on that one, I think. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, what does this stream's titles equation equal? Oh, right. Is this, uh, this is the anti Wait, no, I guess it would be, like, the pro super chat equation. Yeah. See, super chat cat- E fat mini minus super chat catch up minus Elden Ring plus Streamlabs, you know? What does that- what does that lead to? Hashtag Cotton Forte 4K parentheses gone sexual. I think I would say it's the equation to the anti-life equation. Oh, uh, so this is this comes before it. This is even more super duper. Yeah. Um, if we were both, if you were both transracial and transgender, would you rather be accused of cultural appropriation or clitoral appropriation? Oh, clitoral appropriation. Whichever one gets me in less trouble. I have no idea which. Yeah. Give me them clitorises. EFAP minis minus Super Chat Catchup minus Elden Ring plus Streamlabs equals what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Also, play DDLC Maybe Dumbos. Sure. Perhaps. Someday. Perhaps. And uh, the last one, at least for now, is do you skip political Super Chats? Uh, we will read them. As for whether we will answer them in full is another question. Depends um, on the question. Yeah. Maybe we will. Maybe you know, if you were like, not. you guys pro or anti slavery, technically that's a political question and we can give you the answer to that. Oh, pro, easily. And so I think that it's just going to be, you know, it's, it's about spiciness, severity. Oh, I dropped a thing. Um, no. But yes. Uh, oh, no. We try not to ignore any super chats at all because I feel like we will at the very least fulfill the promise of reading them out. Except if I worry about TOS. Um, okay, agree to disagree. Fair enough, Ringy. Play Nier Automata. I played it for a little bit. I liked it. There you go. Never beat it, though. Nier Automata. It's clitori, not, not clitoris's rags. Clitori. Apparently. And uh, the last one. Aloha the rags. Discovered by a man. Hmm. They said aloha. Oh, aloha. Monica and since we're just about about four hours and we've ended a section, I feel like that's a good place to stop. Oh. Um, with the only update I see. being, I see. I have been chopping away on good old Sony Vegas for something that we are all going to see on Saturday, with hopefully <laughs> two two guests. But I'm not even sure if either of them are actually going to make it yet. Um, we shall see. Uh, 
And, um, yeah, I'm sure you guys will have fun with it. It's going to be a bit of a strange EFAP, but not entirely unusual. Something close to it has been done before. Um, before I read the last one out, don't worry, uh, is there anything you guys want to say before we, uh, we depart? Nah. I think I'm A-OK. -okay. I've got... I've got a funsy project that I'm working... Uh, uh, let's say it's a collaboration with someone that should be done pretty soon. I'm thinking in a week it'll be finished. And then I've got uh, something I think that'll be enjoyable on my own uh, that'll be done as well. Somewhat soonish, though I'm, the collaboration's got me a little distracted on that, but we'll see. But yeah, things will be coming. I think they will be fun, and you will enjoy them. Um, Disney Star Wars Greatest Narrative Achievement one, I guess. K2SO. Ah, uh, yeah. A we're getting more robot specific. that is hacked to be defective and used for them, but its personality, like, has fragments that make it so that it's kind of sarcastically helping and kind of finds the whole situation to be bullshit. Like, I, I don't know, I think that's pretty fun. It's probably the best thing they've done. Uh, I'm thinking so. Play and beat near Gestalt before near Automata. Maybe. Maybe we'll do that. I don't know. And uh, play Gestalt of you want but not required, Molly Gay. Alright. We we may do it if we wish to do so, maybe. Uh, Freen, was there anything you wanted to say? Or? Nah, I got nothing. I'm just working. Alright then. On that note, thank you all so much for hanging out, for uh, chatting with us, and for sending those donations. We shall see you Saturday. I... May just see you a little earlier on Open Bar tomorrow, though. But other than that, good night, everybody, and goodbye. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, bye.